Hello everyone, welcome to this channel. I am Lily and in this video I am doing a playthrough of how you can start in 10kbc without migrating a single time. This video is a request of a player who wishes to stay where he settled in Switzerland, 10kbc and never migrate. So let's get started on our Ice Age sedentary adventure in the Alps of Switzerland. Right, let's get straight to it. We want to be 10k BC and we would like to be summer. We're going to stay normal and we're going to stay beginners and the guided tutorial off. We do not need it. And now we need to go find Switzerland. It should be over here somewhere. Let's go find the Alps. No, I think, yeah, hereabouts, about here. There. Where's Matterhorn? It's somewhere around here, isn't it? I'm not sure the devs have added it because we are a bit too east for Atlantic... Um, Europe at this time. Let's uh, get up the work age. Find a spot. Look there between those two mountains. That's going to make for some awesome screenshots. I'm sure of it. Let's go. Let's do this. I'm not too bothered about the speed we're traveling on on beginners because we um, get away with so much that we don't get away with on hardcore. So yeah so um uh, this this video was requested by a guy named bruno um he was wondering if there was any tutorials about how to never have to migrate so and he likes to play from the beginning 10 kbc so let's see how that goes look at all these mountains this oh god this is so beautiful being norwegian this is my taste absolutely my taste right let's get straight to it get down comfort for your people even the beginners and we can only be no build one peltat ouch look at that the eyesore you can't do anything with it it's just so annoying that they're still in the game i wish they would remove it anyway we don't want the peltats too close the reason why that is is because they are eventually going to be deleted one by one as you build and uh, the focal point of the camp is going to be exactly where the fireplace is so we only want the best huts around there Let's uh, do the groups, the usual stuff, fisherman and one to create, one crafter to create fine sticks. Then we are of course going to have sticks and logs. Uh, we don't need three people, I'm going to put down to two. Um, yeah, we don't need insane amounts to start with. We do need um, raw stones as well. So those are not going to have a limit yet. I might put a limit later depending on when we're going to start doing uh, fences. because. We're going to have to do fences simply because we need to work on the skills to make sure that since the tribe is so small we can distribute the skills so that the younger generation learns before the elder ones you know die from old age let's just chalk up priority and get it done it's not important if you don't manage to build everything in one day it's fine no worries at all and uh yeah let's use the builder groups so that we can focus that one person uh, is doing all the building to get higher skills and to discover new skills as soon as this person has reached the max of what the tribe has which is at the moment 5% so we cannot build anything else but peltots and the small straw huts or the poor man shack right then we are gonna the day after we're gonna get stuff going we're gonna, let's see what we've got here it won't be much I mean, it is 10 kbc. We might have a few berries here and there, but that's basically going to be it. And we are too high up to have pine cones. So forget about that as well. Okay. So for now, we probably also only need one gather group of uh, crafter materials, which would be fiber for the ropes, because that's all we can make. And then, of course, we're going to make a crafter group for... Uh, wooden spears because they will be needed both for the fishermen and for the hunters because we have nothing else for them at the moment so i'm um having the tribe help out to get enough raw stone because i don't want them to wake up day three without uh, fireplace and hut so then they were done and then i could remove the uh, encircling i had done of the stones Right, so let's uh, do the other groups. Yeah, don't need that. We can do 
we don't need bones either. We can't, we can't make bone knives, so let's just do some of the fibres for ropes and leave it at that. And we are, of course, going to need straw to build the poor man shacks as well. We don't need a ton. We are fine with a hundred. We're going to continuously build the huts in order to get up uh, the architecture skills. Um, so for now, uh, with regards to putting limits on food, I'm just uh, checking what their locality has and then I will make limits. So I'm not going to explain everything in utter detail of what I am doing. Uh, you can um, learn a lot by simply watching. But uh, as, as, as uh, a base rules, when you land, always get down fireplace, a peltot, so a few offerings, and then sort your groups. Make sure you uh, focus on the material gatherers for what you need to build your fireplace and your pelt art and then add things as you go along. Um, uh, scour the area, I almost said. If you want, you can scout a bit and see what there are of food and resources nearby. But I just uh, add everything to the food group and then I see what the report says that we don't have. Right, so this group is going to do a bit of um, mud as well because we need mud to get up the offerings. And we should also uh, get some uh, organization going with regards to where we're putting things because we would like the crafters to still be efficient and all um, sit and craft at the same place. And of course, also find all the resources at the same place. So there, yeah, I think it's six we've got now. Yeah, right. You you I'm not going to make all of them. I'll make them as I go along. You don't need to chalk down absolutely everything, even though you can see that you can place everything everywhere. It's no point. Just just add what you've got. For now. Um we're gonna place down these as well, but we want to wait for ropes. Yeah, so a uh, few graves. So even in beginners, people will be annoyed if you do not have graves for their loved ones when they die. So just keep that up to date. Keep always a few graves free. Just check how many old people you've got and it shouldn't be an issue really. Okay. Yeah. So we have one fisherman at the moment, but we still have dried fish, so we have plenty to go on. So the secret for me uh, has always been to never waste any food or any critical resources. So no food should be wasted. Um, you don't have to harvest everything. You can leave some to just reseed. Then you tend to get more of them the next year and also avoid harvesting a disliked food unless you are actually starving then you can do it uh, so i am just checking to see what kind of foods we have and this seem it seems the only thing we do have is hated food which is roots so the roots will have to do for now supplement to fish which is a loved food see these guys are going to do mud because we do need mud for the offerings yeah so let them work in peace do not chop down too much at the time a log store can't har cannot harm, so let's put our limit to roughly 250 because that's approximately what I will spend to start with to create a small enclosure for food because I'm not sure we are actually going to get any storage options before we need to think about uh, protecting the food we have from the wild uh, animals because they will come to camp when, when there's too little grass for them to feed on. And in this area, the, the Alps of Switzerland, there will be roughly every winter-ish. We won't have it in the summers because it won't get hot enough to burn the grass. The grass will continue to grow in the summer because it will never be too hot for them here. It shouldn't be, at least. Famous last words. It shouldn't be. You never know. No, you shouldn't get it in Switzerland. That's without a question. Right, so now we can get down uh, dryers. We should get down dryers to make sure we don't waste any food. And luckily for us, we, we now also have uh, the option to put limits on fishing. 
But sometimes the, the food is so rich, especially in beginners, that you can easily pause both the hunters and the fishermen and not have to constantly have them fish up or hunt uh, to extinction any animals. It is going to be completely different if I do this on hardcore. On hardcore you have to rely on absolutely everything to survive and then just uh, hope that the environment changes quickly enough where you are to get other types of food as well. Right, so now we need to keep the uh, architect group busy. They need to be working. We need to increase our architect so we can build more types of housing. Yeah, because we do need a better quality as the years go by. So she already has 5%. That, that means that she will have the max that the tribe has now, which is 5%, which means that she can now discover new objects because we do have uh, um, the option to, to, when you are max skill level, you can discover new things, but they need to be grayed out. In any case, you can still increase your ag ag agriculture, almost said, your architect knowledge. And then as soon as an object is becoming into the right timeline it will be available to build so don't don't slack on the uh, architecture just because you can't see any grayed out items just keep practicing and uh, as time goes by we're also going to give them more people so that more people are having the the skills of architecture okay so one hunting is fine we don't need more for now let's see how this goes so we are doing the, the the meat and the fish and the roots. The roots are not liked, but they also have fish and meat. So they don't always have to, you know, they don't have to consecutively eat roots several days in a row because that, that, that will make them very grumpy. So just just avoid that. Have a, have a nice mix so they have a choice. And I also see we now have berries and berries are loved because they are very sugary. A lot of fructose in berries. Is it fructose it's called? I think it is called the same in, in English as it is in Norwegian. <laughs> yeah, so we don't have those, one of those, and we don't have those. Okay, so we have berries and roots, but I want to put limits. Actually, I want to take away those, never mind, because we have berries. We don't want roots. Roots we can take in an uh, utter emergency. So the, the thing with having uh, all straggler groups to do food even if you put limits is that the more people you have in the straggler group the more people will go out and get food that is below the limit so if you have 10 people and you have the limit on berries to 10 they can sometimes come home with three times more because there are 10 people going for 10 berries each when the limit in camp is below 10 keep this in mind you might want to to create smaller groups for some of these items so you don't over harvest uh, let's put a fairly low limit on the fish what did you have you have nothing but uh, you have nothing bad either so why not could do with uh, a few extra people to start with um, you see now at the moment there are no animals that need to be uh, stripped because they already either being worked on by the the hunters or there just is not any animals dead at the moment but as the years go by you will see that it is super important to have a gathering group that goes out and strip all self-dead animals and also to help out any hunters that are active I'm going to try to have my hunters and fishermen as little activated as possible in case we come to a period in the timeline where there is very little food and then we have to rely on fish and meat we could have and we should have a small trickle of meat and fish to make sure that people always have enjoyed food loved food and for sure fish and meat is the most loved food and if we have also honey and berries that will also help a lot so if you have plenty income of honey and berries you can more often pause your fishermen and your hunters or put down the limits very low on both so because then you have other loved foods to keep your people happy 
problem often is that um, due to the timeline restrictions, we can't get really good quality housing, even though they are grayed out, unless we either get migrants with more levels in that knowledge, or we are uh, working uh, on the levels ourselves and we do that by creating new tasks all the time both for those who have the max skill level and for the new generation the next generation the younger people to learn up to what the elder people have this is very important so now it's time because now it's winter it's time to protect our food from the wild animals because they will be coming into camp to steal easy access food because now it's um, especially in this timeline there's going to be extremely little food out in the wild if any so let's just uh, create the, the fence builders and get it uh, sorted gonna do stone stone is durable and reliable and only takes stone I find it less hassle to do stone fences than any of the others but you know, when you have a really big tribe, you need to, to have it balanced out with regards to the types of fences. Otherwise, you're going to reach limit on how many fences you can have of any one type. Because, of course, there are limits on absolutely everything in the game. Everything has limits. I tend to hit them all when I play my big tribes in testing. Um, yeah, so, yeah, limits on absolutely everything. Okay, so we have... We have um, work to do with regards to getting stone working up because we as quickly as possible want the access really really want the access because that's the first that's the first tool we get that will help gather us to put a crop and and uh, yeah get materials from from the wild to do it more quickly to be more efficient yeah okay uh, look at the weather we are snowing in which i love Let's assign these to foods. We have berries, yeah, good. Of course, raw fish, of course, of course. Let's get all these done. We don't want to lose anything to wild animals. They can scrape the ground and find food underneath. Let's see. Let's do some nuts. We shouldn't be too far off to get nuts either. I'm not too optimistic with honey and rose hips, but you know, we should really be close enough to the Mediterranean to uh, not have to wait several thousand years to get honey or rose hips. We could be really lucky and get them in a few hundred years. We'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, get, get it up, get it up, let me see, yeah. So she's the one who will um, get higher levels for overall for the tribe, the max skill levels. And then we also have one person doing all these. So she does not have stone working yet, but she will get it if she sticks to the group. And now we have created all the fencing in one go. So she will stay in the group until all the fences are done or until she runs out of material, of course. Yeah. Okay, so it's going to take a while before the fences are up. So in theory, wild animals could come and help themselves. But you know, there won't be a lot of animals here. There's the other hare, perhaps a wild dog to start when You can see the amount of, of meat coming into the camp is not very high. But it is plenty enough. Can you see that? It's plenty enough. So how you calculate how much food your tribe is going to eat, either per day or per meal, perhaps is that you take the amount of elders and the amount of young people, children, put them together and divide by two. Then you get the amount that young and elder will eat combined. Yeah? And the uh, amount of adults will always be one unit. But 
this is not an accurate science because it also depends on how much calories there is in the food that they are eating. So getting it 100% precise is not going to be possible. It's going to be too intricate to do because it, conditions can change per birth, per, per adult going old, per child becoming adult. It is too nitpicky. So just as a, as a rule of thumb, old and young put together divided by two equals what young and elder will eat put together all together so if you have a hundred children a hundred young people a <laughs> hundred children a hundred old people put them together that's 200 then divided by two that's a hundred they will eat roughly a hundred food put together if you have 200 uh, adults they will eat between 180 maybe 170 to 200 depending on the calorie count in the food they are eating so high calorie count food is fish meat nuts bread milk and both grain types honey as well is fairly rich in calories uh, honey also has a lot of sugar Berries are very low. They will eat like two, three, four, five, and six of the berries in order to get the amount of calories they need. So it is it is important to to calculate a little bit if you want to min max everything to stay sedentary in the same locality starting 10 k BC. Let's have a look at you. I don't think you're going to be fit for us at all. So I'm gonna yeah deny. So if you have 60 people and say one third of them are kids then you will eat between 45 and 50 per meal yeah so always detract so even if you have 300 people they won't eat 300 because kids and elder eat much less up to half what adults eat so this is a way to calculate and uh, also we should not worry at all about the red the blue or the yellow apple this will show you if the tribe is running out of food. The point is we're supposed to not have more food than we need per day. So I'm going to play like I do on hardcore when I start 10 KBC, have utter, utter restrictions on food. Utter restrictions. So those um, uh, migrants that actually contribute to the tribe, we are going to take, check out their skills and their grades. If they are contributing to anything in the tribe, take them. If not, decline them. Try to not overpopulate your tribe so much. If you have an increase of approximately between five and 10 per year, that should be basically the line you should put yourself on. So when you reach year 10, you should be approximately between 90 and 110 people, max 110. Because you need to remember that the game will increase the amount of wild produce. Everything will be adjusted per tribe size. But if you are growing too quickly, the environment will lag behind. So don't accept any huge groups of migrants. Just do it like I, I informed already. Check their grades, check their skills. If they have nothing to contribute, reject. Yeah. You also just uh, need to, to see, do we actually need more people to do what we need to keep the tribe happy and alive? And if you don't, then you have another reason to reject. But I, on principle, normally um, do not reject people who can increase skills, especially in this early in the timeline, because we need all the help we can get to increase efficiency, to increase uh, or to decrease the amount of workforce we need per task. Because the better tools you have, the less people you will need to get the same amount that people without proper tools will need to get the same amount. Yeah more migrants let's have a look at you yeah you look like you have uh, increased um, hunting and you don't really have any bad skills yeah yeah I think uh, I think this is a, this is a yes yeah let's take it 
because we need to also re remember that we might have to accept um, even though we have plenty hunting at the moment skills we need to accept those who are a little below on skills as well because we are going to pause the hunters as much as possible to save the wild prey the prey so that they can grow become big flocks and then we can use the old tested and, and secure method of stripping self-dead animals and you will have a nice trickle throughout the entire year for forever if you do it like that i'm not sure you can do it in hardcore to be honest but in beginners no problem whatsoever so don't start with over hunting just a focus on the small animals the hares the rats the darn rats you can do the wild dogs too if you like but do remember to do the wild boars because they are ferocious in coming to camp to steal they bring in all their 80 kids with them <laughs> i never exaggerate ever right but now you you know you need to be stingy on food keep between one to two meals per day maybe one and a half day of meals ignore the apple in the tribe state even if you see it's red don't worry you count the food you have take a prox calories and then you see how many people you have how many kids how many old and how many adult if you have 60 people one third of them being kids we will eat between 40 45 maybe 50 max of food uh, yeah you have increased fishing or you're weak though that's the, the, the great one so that's not too bad not the worst at all yeah can take you ladies and gents no problem we are going to chalk down plenty housing non-stop the poor man shack only take two people so we need several of them especially if we're going to stay on the guideline that we are taking people that increases our skill levels and that have really good grades then we will need to constantly uh, keep up with building houses and of course that also means we will constantly uh, give chances for the builders to develop more skills yeah it is really important especially in hardcore this is beginner though but in, in hardcore it is really important to keep up trying to get more skills via working with the skill so that when timeline shows you grayed out items you will quickly get them so if you have more skills than the actual item require but you're in the wrong timeline when you get into the wrong right timeline you will immediately get the object yeah so just keep keep training your people yeah do not uh, mock about just because you can't see a great great out item it does not mean you cannot get it as soon as you you can see it if you have the skills for it because you can easily have the skills for it yeah so yeah rule number one don't waste food so we still have berries we still have we've have fish and we have meat so we are fine we don't need to go anywhere else to to get anything uh, so now yeah it was a good thing that uh, I calculated well on if I could build a, a, another peltart or not because now the other one needs repairs okay so you have stone working that is a good thing absolutely you guys are coming with us because now look at that yeah good more things to make no not you but you are going to make the trident so this means the fishermen will be more efficient however that is not always a good thing there are exceptions to having good tools good tools means they will fish more and more quickly which also means they will learn slower because they do, do not learn while they're walking to and from fishing they will only learn when fishing so if you are low on fishing take away their good tools do not let them have good tools let them work longer with fishing wooden spears hands whatever it's the same with hunters remove the good the good tools let them um, hunt longer to get better skills this is an old old trick i've been doing since since hunting started I almost said 
yeah since hunting started because when i started we couldn't hunt we could only strip self that animals we did not have any hunters so yeah to to build up skills give them shitty tools and they will spend longer on performing the tasks hence they will level up their skills faster see yeah a few hints and tips along the way cannot hurt Yeah, so my builder is uh, adamantly building. So the walls are up now for the food. So the food is now safe. So when next winter comes and, and animals become hungry and want to come steal, there will be nothing to steal. Or there shouldn't be anything to steal. Um, and as soon as we get pits, we're going to get up uh, those and add all plant food into the pits. We cannot add any animal products or animal produce into the pits we do need baskets for those and that might take a bit longer so yeah look at that we got both rose hips now and honey what the heck yeah there's still no mushrooms it's also the wrong season for mushrooms anyway we even have beets damn luxury this would never happen in, in, up in Norway, not in a billion years. You would have to migrate forever to survive with your two hairs, one wild dog, and that's it. And two roots, three clams. <laughs> that's all you have. It is so hardcore. Crikey. Okay, so I put the limit low on, on fishing. Now, just remember if you're putting limits on uh, fishermen are often not doing anything, take in migrants that offer you fishing skills and hunting skills or activate them every now and then to let people work on the skills because you cannot lose it all together because then you lose the ability to both fish and hunt you can't have that so you need to pay attention you have to pay attention okay so let's get some storage for for the um for the uh honey as well and also for the beets do we have our honey already mm, yeah we're gonna need those too if you go Yeah. Okay, so people are still 100% happy because we don't have any grayed out housing in the build tab. So they are 100% satisfied with the Peltot and the poor man shack. To them, that's luxury, you know? They're very happy with what they've got so far, but that will only last till the great gray items start coming because then they will know, mm, other tribes have these. Why can't we have those? We want those, you know. In the end, they will be really unhappy with what they've got. Even in beginners, yeah? It goes for the same. Same as hardcore. They will only accept it for so and so long. So we're going to prepare for ha to have um, uh, baskets discovered now because uh, now that it's grayed out, we can discover it. So let's just get some more uh, fiber in and, and get the rope industry going. Yeah, get two more. Or two at all to do it. Double the amount of people. Look! So now, things are going down in popularity. Yep, now the Poman Shack is no longer luxury. But we need to hammer to get up the skills now. Unless we get uh, uh, migrants who can bring the skills. But why wait? Do it yourself. You have the materials. You have the people. Start seeing if you can get it yourself. Don't wait around. As soon as it becomes timeline appropriate, the item that you lack will become grayed out in your build tab. And then you can work on it with your tribe. You're not locked. The only thing that's locking you is the timeline. Which means even though you know that we can get round houses and long houses, you will never see it until the timeline is appropriate. Otherwise, if you could spam yourself to get whatever you wanted with skills only, we could have long houses in 8k BC. How is that correct in where we are? Never going to happen. So there's a reason why there are culture requirements. Timeline appropriate items need culture requirements. Yeah. Just keep that in mind. But that doesn't mean you can't get the skill levels. You can prepare your tribe by keeping working on your skill levels. Because the second they then are timeline appropriate, 
poof, you will get them. Ta-da! So that is what we are doing. Just keep going. So I will soon add more people to my, my, my group. Oh, and uh, she doesn't have any um, ar architecture at all. She will get it though. I'm not worried. There's plenty houses to do. Let's see. I'm also putting them on the pelts just to, make, to help out the hunters. Because I paused the hunters because we have so much food. So now all the animals will reproduce and create huge flocks. So if you are going to keep hunting, make sure you take the wild boars, the, the rats and the hares. And you can take the wild dogs if you want as well. Because they also go for quite a bit of the food. But not as much as the wild boars. The wild boars are the worst. Absolutely the worst. They are a pest. Yeah. All wild boars and their 80 kids are pests. Okay, so... Yeah, there she got it. Good. Yeah, she got the um, rudimentary skills. And they will, she will quickly work up to 8%, which it is on now. Because now we've discovered uh, another 3% ourselves. Okay, dokey. Yeah. Building, building, building. A lot of walking. I probably, maybe I should have placed down some some sticks and ropes uh, storages over here as well. A lot of time is wasted on walking. I placed down the hay stacks there, so they shouldn't have to walk so much. Oh, but she's eight percent already on the uh, <laughs> on the architecture, so there's nothing to worry about. So now we have several several people with the. Let me see. Oh yeah, you got increased in fishing. Yeah, good. And you have increased in hunting. And you have, yeah, not the worst, at least. Actually, it is the worst. You have, um, first you have, no, you have uh, on on uh, will reductions. You have hesitant, indecisive, and the worst one is apathic, apathetic. It's horrendous. Oh, gosh, they start complaining the second they're out of their mothers, you know what. Right, keep going, guys, keep going. So we want them to discover how to make straw huts because we're going to need those because uh, the straw huts now will have the highest uh, uh, quality for sleep they will be 30 percent because there's nothing better at the moment but very shortly the, the reed huts are going to show and then the straw huts will go down in quality and the uh, the small uh, straw huts will be abhorrent so yeah there's a lot of snowing up here, isn't it? It's a lot of winter, a lot of cold. Not like super duper cold, but enough for the snow to stay for days. Let me see, get another one. Mm, I don't want you. No. Let's try again. We don't want old people. You want young people to learn. Let's wait a bit till he's gone. Oh, yeah, that didn't work. It's 64. He's got like two, three years left uh, to live. Go away. My gird. Try again. Oh yeah, now it's rest time, so nobody will come. <laughs> but you can you can fiddle a bit with the with the groups yourself to to I don't know cheat a bit. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, there you go. Now we got one. Keep them busy. This will all be dismantled at a later point anyway. Keep an eye on the food. Calculate perhaps one and one and day and a half of food. At the moment we have we have food. Look at that. Don't need to worry. We have a little bit. We are a bit low on the very loved food. So I'm going to get 106 Lily. Let's do 100, 100, 100 fish Lily. <laughs> Let's do the usual small amount. And then they can just uh, enjoy that. So they had enough for... The thing with berries, you need to eat like two, three, four, five, six, depending your age and, and condition to get the full full calorie count. Uh, so yeah, they're going to uh, get uh, a meager breakfast. Are they going to get any breakfast at all? No, they're not. Go to work, then come back and eat when you're hungry. Nothing to it. Can easily manage that. I'm not worried at all. OK, 
Okay, so the food is still safe, whatever we get in. Let's just chuck up two to get them quickly in so people can eat. But now there's also meat to harvest. Let's see what else. Oh, we have mushrooms. Oh, we have nuts. We are saved. There's no, no peas still. We are basically saved. If you get nuts, you're going to be okay. <laughs> on beginners, mark my words, on beginners. On hardcore, zero guarantee. Zero. So get some extra nuts because they do like nuts and nuts have high calories. And it's a, a medium liked, loved food. But now we have a nice mix again of loved food and medium liked food. So the fish and the meat will do the the best trick and then of course berries are sugary. Yeah, the kids are probably gonna run wild to get sugar sugary food. Not surprised. Yeah, so then we need it for mushrooms as well. Get it in inside the uh, the locked off fence I almost said, the secure fencing. Now we can go down on fishing. And only do one person. Let me have a look at you. Yeah, you have increase in, in both your skills. That's not bad at all. And you have in stone working. The, I'm going to take these. Look at that. Now we can make stone axes. Then we're going to need to get a few of these. We're going to be really stingy on the fine raw stones. Because they are so scarce really scarce and we're also going to utilize our traders and our raiders if need be if you can avoid to use more than one max two per year of your own resources of the really scarce resources find raw stone flint cores mm, be careful you can stay forever really you can actually stay forever if you reach the neolithic timeline in the Guinness, you never have to worry about food. Never. The only worry is to get enough of the critical resources, fleet cores, and fine raw stone. So we're going to use raiders and traders to get what we need without hammering our own resources in this locality. So that is a way to do it. Be, be stingy on your critical resources. Keep people uh, occupied with building stuff that people learn skills yeah keep building so I've placed down a ton of the huts to make sure that they never stop because if they stop they leave the group and go to the group that either needs more people or has space for them oh hello yeah that's uh, excellent now we have a proper uh, cropping tool and they won't steal the axe so much because the axe is worse than the, the the bone knife to crop things of course but now we are going to need bones so that also means we need to create a storage area and lock it so that nobody goes to eat it no. okay that's beautiful Lily very pretty very orderly let's do it um, with a square and far away for people <laughs> far away <laughs> right there you go that'll do it and lock ta-da so now only the crafters will go help themselves let's see how they're doing keep going girls yeah Keep an eye on the food. We have plenty of food. No worries. Okay. Mm, let me see. How are you guys doing? Yeah. So the limit uh, thing is quite okay to have, isn't it? You can quickly see whatever is blue. Okay, limit reached. So quite a good thing the devs did. Right, so keep, keep telling yourself. You need to not forget. 
do not waste food. Look at that. Now we can make pits. Oh, yes. That means that we have increased uh, architecture. Good, 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 good. And that we can now build more architecture with other items. We still don't have enough to get the st straw house, the straw hut. But uh, now we can um, practice uh, architecture with more items. I don't particularly love that they are now costing fine sticks above just normal sticks but we do need them to make sure that nothing is lost to decay we do not wish to waste any food uh, granted in beginners you can probably get away with wasting a little bit but you will not get away with it in hardcore but then again in hardcore you'll probably have so low income that people will gobble up everything on the first day they co it comes in anyway first meal it was all going to be gone so they're going to be half starved to death most of the time but I think I'm going to do the attempt to see if I can actually manage to stay in the same locality in region 2 which this is region 2 is medium difficulty with regards to locality and the amount of food you can get even in the ice age so region 1 which is up in north it will be part of England Scotland Norway Sweden Denmark part of Russia but you, you know the more northern part, which is region one, which is the absolute hardest. And then you have region two, which is the rest of England and most of France and the more southern parts of Germany. Um, some northern parts of Germany is also in region in region one, but only a very small part of it. And then you, of course, have region three, which is the easiest one with the most food. Region three is basically Spain, Portugal, southern of France yeah and and that's it really so we are in region two which is medium so if this had been in region one the most northern part of region near region one we wouldn't have a lot of the food types we have now we would not have nuts we would not have honey we would not have rose hips we would not have we would might have a few mushrooms we would have berries though and we would of course have have fish and meat and roots. Roots you can get all the way as high up uh, north as you can get. And uh, they last for so long as well. They basically grow the entire year. You just dig down and get them no matter time of year, isn't it? So it can be quite a lifesaver no matter how little they are like. They are supposed to taste really bitter, but they are very nutritious. So there you go. Right, so let's fill up the pits as soon as they are done. And then we can, of course, uh, delete... Uh, the uh, open storages for them because um, in the end when we get livestock this is where we're going to place some of the food yeah yeah another one ready you can have them rose hips then we can delete that one or we can change it to someone else or something else we don't need to delete it they will be deleted in the end though but one step at a time So see all the food we've got. We have a lot of food. Uh, the berries will go quickly because they are so loved. Uh, the raw fish will go. Oh no, actually no, it won't because we placed them on the dryer. So the, the fish and the meat will be dried first. So then they will probably take, uh, yeah, the berries are gone immediately. They will probably take the nuts as well. And, and the rose hips are medium calories and also medium liked. But I'm really glad that uh, rose hips are back to being a staple along with the hazelnuts because they used to be it and then something was changed with the temperatures so a lot of areas especially uh, region 1 and region 2 had very little rose hips and even region 3 parts of Spain basically had no rose hips it was really weird and parts of England nothing nothing for years so they, they sorted some of the temperatures and uh, now we have it again so keep up with the graves, yeah. So even in beginners, uh, people will uh, be really upset if they can't bury their dead loved ones. Yeah, so now people also mourn their dead for several days after they're gone. So they will go to their graves and they will uh, do some praying around the graves and, and mourn. That is also a, a more realistic change, isn't it? It's not like... It used to be, they buried them and then they're forgotten. It's never going to happen, is it? If you lose a loved one, you will never stop grieving, really. Let me see, you should be... 
berries. Where's the last one we need? It's mushroom, isn't it? Yeah, mushrooms. Mushrooms. Let's uh, change the commodity. For these, just change what they should keep. We still need to, to keep all animal products and animal produce in the uh, fenced in area because we don't have pits for them. No, don't have baskets for them and they can't be in pits. Right. Yeah. They are not loved, but we still need it to increase our architecture. So I'll just chalk down more and more and more. Keep keep them busy. I might I might put. Uh, rose hips and berries in another group because they tend to over harvest both the berries and the um, the rose hip it seems and they're um, almost at longevity they can't last that long even if you have them in pits they they decay quite fast while nuts can last like forever so even if they over harvest a little bit of the nuts they won't be so decayed um, the berries and the rose hips will though so I might put them in another group and I really should um, let me see, you are doing, yeah, only doing small animals. Okay, fine. Yeah. So I'm going to be super stingy on fishing and hunting. Super stingy. I might lose some skill levels here and there, but you know what? That's fine. That's fine. Because you will always, always, always get migrants who will increase your skills in all the basic, the, the rudimentary skills, fishing, hunting, you know, those things, leatherworking, toolsmithing. What I feel is that the hardest to get at times from migrants are actually good increases in architecture. Do you guys have anything? There's some good grades, but uh, nothing else. So I'll, um, yeah, sorry. Access denied. Unit denied. Let me see. Yeah, good quick repairs. So we don't have a lot of reed or fiber. Oh, crikey. Yeah, I can see the reed house. We have one stalk although there's a few stalks over there yay we can get a third of a reed hut so we have to <laughs> we have to rely on this tall grass otherwise there'll be no reed hut we don't have enough reed it's too cold for them still yeah i'm patient i can wait besides we will get it from tall grass i want them to discover this themselves so i'm going to keep hammering them with with building projects now we can also use uh, lumberjacks, so we won't need that one. And lumberjacks, of course, also has limits now, so. Toolsmithing, yeah, good. So people are getting new levels all the time, it's excellent. So, thumb rule. Stingy on food, that's it. Be stingy on food. Calculate what you need. When you see that the food is three times more than your population, it's time to chill. Um, you and you, yeah. They look all right, don't need changes. You need to remember to change, of course, based on your population. You change the people in the groups, you change the amounts they shall get. We can go down on the uh, axis now because we have uh, bone knives who will do the cropping and they will do it better than the axes. So it's always a good idea. But the more we can save on the fine raw stones, the better. I'm gonna go see as well soon if there are any tribes with things with things we want. Let's give them some benches. Some more benches for the crafters to sit on. Ta-da.
we have we have quite a few items grayed out now that we can in theory discover ourselves so we just need to make sure we are creating enough tasks for people to work on their skills and then poof we will have it how are you doing yeah you're good So keeping them constantly busy means that they won't leave the group, so they, they will work on their skills. It doesn't matter if you build too many houses, so don't worry about that. If you're going to do build by need only and still have a good increase in skills, you need to accept all migrants so you have an excuse to keep building houses. I, however, am not going to do that. I'm just going to spam because I want better housing. And I know how to do it. And now you guys know how to do it as well. You probably did already, but there you go. There could be a new player that did not know. Keep on, keep on building. Keep on creating tasks. Get more of these. We can place a few here, can't we? So service points is important to calculate as your tribe grows. Uh, pits is not a good idea to use for high volume foods because you need so many. Because uh, pits only have one service point. A service point is the amount of people that can help themselves from this service point at the same time. And um, I used to call them killer pits. And I still do. They are killer pits because people will stand in line so long they are basically dying from starvation. I'm exaggerating to make a point. The devs have made sure that they don't do that anymore. So they will instead just move on to the next storage option or, or just wait a bit and then go back when it's less queue. But um, it's still, uh, for a large tribe, it is... Um, best used for low produce food or for uh, storing animal uh, food in like uh, flax grains because you don't want to feed your people flax grain because they hate it yeah they would want uh, better food uh, the animals would love it and it has got t over more than doubled the amount of calories in them so they will eat a lot a lot less grains in comparison to the amount of, of straw they will need so when you do have Neolithic and you do have uh, animals, have livestock, get up your flax farms and give your grains to the livestock. Not the wheat grains, mind. Because wheat grains will give you a lot of bread and bread has high calorie, just as high calorie as the grains. So it is a fantastic uh, produce to feed your tribe. So uh, four sheaves, will give 10 bread. One bread can feed between two to four people, depending their um, uh, condition and age. Keep that in mind. So some of these calculations is something you don't have to think about in beginners because the, the food tends to be so plentiful, even in 10 KBC, especially region one and region three, but on hardcore. You, you need to make these calculations. The more people you have, the more of these min-maxing calculations you need to do to make sure you can actually feed your people. How are we doing? Yep, still building. So the, uh, the pits also give architecture skills and more migrants. You have absolutely, oh my goodness, you're bad, bye. Love you, bye. Don't love you, bye. <laughs> no, I don't want it. Right, let's see. Bothered. Yeah, so now they can see the grayed out items that we cannot build yet. And they are starting to say that, ah, oh, I don't want this house. I want something better. Because they no longer like to, to sleep in the uh, poor man's shack. But you know what? This is what we've got. You have to accept it. Yep, they don't want to be in the uh, small straw hut. 
If I could mod it, I would mod the name to be called Poor Man Shack. But I do not know how to change things. And I need to be careful because uh, when I'm on the dev service, I'm supposed to be doing testing and not cheating. <laughs> Without cheating. Let's see what these have. Yeah, you have increased fishing, but a bad grade. How bad? Oof. All these are annoying. And you have increase in uh, leather workings. I'm going to have to take you guys, even if one of you is a winch. But on, on beginners, they, they don't winch that much. It's not that bad at all. It's, it's on hardcore. They are really a pain in the you know where. So for now, you can stay. You can stay. So we have 30 or 30, is it, is it 12 young ones and 4 elderly? So that's 16, that means they will eat roughly 8 per meal. So, so between 20 and 25 food is what this tribe will eat per meal. So max 50 food per day is all they need. We have plenty food. Nothing to worry about. Oh, but we can't skimp on being stingy. We need to be constantly stingy. We kind of, if we have the red apple in the tribe state window all the time, we're doing it right. Because nobody's dying from starvation, are they? Everybody's alive. You have nothing. You have nothing. And some of you have bad grades. Yeah, that, that's a no. Off you go. Off with his head. Yeah, they're still working on the pits as well. We have enough graves. We have two graves. And he only got to 67. So that's rather on low after they increased the lifespan of humans. Because now the average is like 69-ish. Up to 71-ish, 72-ish. So 67 is on the very lower spectrum. But they're not complaining about the Paltots yet. They are complaining about the, the poor man's shacks, which is fine. Yeah, so have enough service points. So if you, if you notice that uh, people are, for instance, eating roots and bones or grains, then you know that you have too few service points when you know that you have plenty 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 of food so that means get more service points down even if it's just pits if your tribe is small but if it is large i think the best way to go is baskets and of course storehouses because then three people can help themselves at the same time because baskets and storehouses have three service points so this is always uh, something to, to keep in mind, that the larger your tribe becomes, the more service points you will need. Because the, the new rule, the new way uh, the game works now is that people refuse to stand in, in queues that are longer than five to six members. Then they move on to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next, until they come to hated foods. And you know then, if they eat bones, you have too few service points, unless you're out of food, of course, but that is something you see yourself. If you have several thousand food and they still eat bones, then you definitely need more service points. Okay, let's make more storage uh, options here for the tools as well, not only for the resources. So when we get the, the farms, which will come between four and five KPC, where we are at the moment, we should have tools also close to where the farms are to avoid that the farmers are running back and forth, swapping tools and finding tools and, and getting seeds, blah, 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 blah. So we need to have seeds and tools that we need close to the farms. That will increase efficiency, yeah? You might not need to minimax so much in beginners. For sure you don't. In hardcore, you should. You really should, especially when tribe is large. You can get away with a lot when tribe is small, but when tribe is big, mm -mm, nah. -uh. Just add some extra things we have tons of the bone knife for instance we have so many of right
Look at the fishermen, too much food. Look at the roseps decaying away. So I wanted to pause the, fish, the hunters and now I'm pausing the fishermen. It's just too much food, we need to eat it up. Okay, so I need two. Okay, that was a tree there. Oh, there you go. There you go. Look at her. Increasing the knowledge. whoop de doo Told ya. But that means that these little peeps can be deleted, dismantled. So then we're going to build the... Oh, God. Now the, the big straw hat house is showing. That means that the quality of whatever we build now will not be as high as it was two seconds ago. <laughs> Well, it is what it is. Let's just get a few down. I think we're going to keep a few of those, just like we're keeping a few of the peltas, just to have varying materials um, used for repairs and building, so we don't hammer so much on any one resource. Because until we get farms with wheat, we need to not be too extravagant with hammering the locality for only one type of resource all the time because it will go down a bit for every year only a smidgen though but of course in the end after 10 20 30 50 years in the same locality your people will have to go further and further away to get more of the resource they will regrow but they will uh, eventually need to be replenished and, and then you won't get it anymore at least not close to camp. It tends to, to be a nice uh, circulation here, so it goes um, starting close to camp, and then you need to go further and further away. And by the time you are further and further away, the closest ones have started to be replenished and will come back up. So like every 10 years or so, there's a nice uh, um, circulation of replenishment. It's kind of like a uh, following um, fields to wait for the nourishment to come back to the soil you know so they can lay fallow for like 10 years or so some only need a few but some need more so this is quite common as well so it it it, it there is logic directly related to real life so i'm gonna um see if we can get more uh, stone working skills up because we want the biface, so let's just hammer on with skills. It's so hard to make nice circles now with the way that the, 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 you know, the fencing system is done. It looks so clunky, really. It's like it's impossible to do the smaller circles like we used to all the time. That was so nice to have with a small patch of, of, of a farm inside. Like we can't really do that anymore. At least not the small ones. We could do the big ones but not the small ones who need very, very fine angles. Don't have that option. But at least we don't have an issue with animals sneaking in through any fences anymore, which is, to be honest, to be preferred, because that could be so annoying when they did that. So yeah, I'm not going to complain too much, only a little bit. I'm only going to complain a little bit. A smidgen. Okay, let people work in peace and sleep in peace. So if you have only a one person doing a lot of tasks, then that person will quickly reach the max of what skill level the tribe has as max. And then he then will have the opportunity to, to reach higher levels and increase the overall level for the tribe. So if you have several, then that will be divided on many. And if you don't have a corresponding amount of tasks for them both, then none of them will learn anything. So keep that in mind. When tribe is small, you need to have the groups that you are going to uh, uh, try to get more skills on. They need to be small. Yeah. So, yeah. Hammering on. Keeping an eye on food, still do not need to activate either fishermen or hunters. I, I might activate them once a year or so to try to keep up with the skills. Although, not worried. There will always be migrants coming with more. Losing a few skill, skill levels here and there, no big deal. 
What I don't want to lose though is our architecture. I don't want to lose any architecture and I don't want to lose any toolsmithing. I don't want to lose any stoneworking or woodworking. The rest is not super duper important because we are not depending on them to be really high to get the items we need to keep people happy and to keep tribe efficient. Yeah, makes sense. So I need to keep up with, with the work, need to constantly create more work. Now the apple is blue, so we have plenty of food. Zero Neolithic influence, it's too early, way too early. Even though we are pretty far east, it is still too early. I expect that the first few um, migrants having some Neolithic influence will start coming after 6K BC sometime. And they won't have much, but they will have some. We could probably have even more service points than we have, but I'm not going to spend more iron sticks on it. I'm going to wait for baskets. Because then we can get the animal products and the animal produce as well secured in, in uh, a DK pr protection storage options. So the, the, uh, the two or oh, many berries are left, uh, the few berries left will go in the morning no problem, and of course the honey will go immediately. Honey is quite calorie rich and sugary and, and extremely loved. Oh, and the berries are gone already, yeah. <laughs> no surprise, no surprise there. Let's chuck down one more, keep them busy, ultra busy. Let's do one more so we can spread the archi architecture more, then we have more chance of getting discovery ourselves so now uh, three of them have maxed out their skill level so we are secure but i want more so we can have higher option or, or on people who can actually max out oh look how beautiful this is the max house the max out and get uh, new objects because as soon as they are grayed out we can discover them ourselves it is so pretty here i think i found my new favorite place Thank you, Bruno, for showing me that uh, there is a lot of beauty here in the Alps. I don't think we have Matterhorn, though. I would love to live next to Matterhorn. But I don't think that the devs are doing a specific mountains. They've done the Alps, of course, and Matterhorn is in the Alps. But I think it's a bit more west than we are. I don't quite remember. So, yeah. We're getting quite busy, aren't we? We have quite a few things built. 1500 years we've been here. Okay, yellow apple, that's fine as well. Even red apple is fine, so don't, don't, don't stress, don't panic if you see red apple. Just count your people, take away one third of that, and then check that you have food, that amount of food. That's all you need to do. They won't die from, from having too little of one meal. They won't die for it, from it. It'll be fine. So you can see that they are uh, coming home with two high amounts. And that is because it's basically 28 people gathering. You can see there's also meat available that they should go for. So, yeah, we have plenty of food.
Now we're starting to go um, so uh, low in um, the timeline that we should, in theory, get more objects to build, like the big reed hut. I'm just not sure it's any point building it, to be honest, because um, even if you have the big reed hut available, you still have plus uh, quality from the small reed hut, and the small reed hut is then still more economical to build and you need not build constantly the 30 percent quality sleep options because a tribe will be happy with less so you can get away with not always always building the best quality if at least some of the others have good quality because they will rotate as well you know not everyone is sleeping in the same place all the time so don't worry too much about that yeah so i'm going to do the small straw huts and i'm going to wait with building the big reed huts until people are uh, not 100 percent anymore then i might consider building a few of the big reed huts which will have 30 percent sleep quality so that will pretty quickly remove any unrest from when they the odd night have to sleep in the pelt hut or in the small straw hut yeah. Well, we're going to delete all the poor man shacks and only have the the medium straw huts because the, they are they are uh, not best quality, but they, at least they are not going to give people unhappy faces, which is kind of what we want to avoid. But but luckily in beginners, it takes a while before people leave. But you know, if you constantly give them really bad options to sleep in, after some years they will leave anyway because they will will decide how much more of this can I take, you know. So keep, keep an eye on that, just to make sure if you see a yellow face, investigate it and see what the problem is. If it is lack of quality housing, it means that this guy unfortunately has slept consecutive nights either in the pelt hut or in the straw hut. The pelt hut now is the worst option we have when we have deleted all the small uh, small straw huts. But uh, we, we're doing okay. We don't have unhappy faces even though we have tons of people sleeping in both pelt huts and the small straw huts. But we're doing okay, so the rotation is okay. Ish. Okay, ish. Some are bothered. Because it isn't the best option, isn't it? It isn't. There are many are sleeping in, in worse options. Still plenty of food, a lot of food actually. And there will soon be a, a surge in raw meat because uh, old animals will die and then your gatherers will go strip them. Um, yeah, you have increase in uh, woodworking. I will take you. Good, good, good. Yeah, so you see the big, uh, the big straw hut has the highest um, quality at the moment, but it, it's not, it's not needed. It's not needed at all yet, because the the small reed hut will do the same thing, and it's much, much more economical to build. Much more economical to build. Yeah, you are learning. Good, good. Almost there, keep going. Keeping hunters and fishermen uh, paused still. We have plenty of food. Look at that, we have plenty, plenty of food. Even oh, the, the apple is red, like screaming. Oh, look, told ya. Now we can make baskets, which means that we can now put also the animal product and the animal produce into proper storages, which is good. This is good. Yeah, so let's gather more fiber 
and then we're going to get rid of all those. Then it is basically ready for livestock, and then we're going to put straw in there for them. Ta-da! And now we have storage options that are not in the open for all the food we have. Absolutely everything now will be in, in proper storage, closed storage, which means less decay, even less decay, which is what we want. We don't want any waste, as little as possible. As soon as these huts need repairs, those small straw huts, I'm going to just dismantle them replace them with the, the straw hut. Removing all the small ones, adding more, keeping people busy so they don't leave the group. Yeah, I'm going to de delete, I think, one of the... Oh, hello. Yeah, now we can make you two. Right. That basically means that the one that is uh, free should go get some reed. So each of those small reed huts take 50. So if we gather 100, we should be all right. Then we can do a few reed huts at the same time. In the end, all the uh, small straw huts will of course be gone. And one of the pelt hearts, I think. I'm thinking, I think I'm going to leave two pelt hearts. And in the end, I'm just going to have those four straw houses I have now. And then the rest is going to be small. The, you know, the, the, reed, the reed houses. Not the big ones, because they are not more economical. But the smaller ones. So I'm trying to skip the nights and the periods where there's little things happening um, to not have the video so incredibly long. But it does take time to play from 10k BC until well into the Neolithic timeline. It's not done in, in an hour. It takes hours upon hours to do. So I'm going to try to cut it down a bit. At least remove all the nights because there's not so much happening in the night, is there? Although now we as players can do a lot of work because now we've got proper light by the mouse when it's night so we can see what we're doing. Oh yeah, I'm going to take this one away. We can fill up the other one and then I'm going to remove that one as well. Let's do more. Not too close. There you go. That's probably going to be the last uh, straw house I'm going to place down. And from now on, it's going to be the reed only because they give more sleep quality. So, so the reed huts, not the big ones, but the normal reed hut and the big straw hut will always have the same sleep quality. And since um, the big straw hut is so much less economical than the small straw hut. There will never really be any need for the big straw huts. Unless you're doing it for aesthetics. Oh no, you, you're not very good, are you? You have to go to the next, please. I'm losing my voice. I have been losing my voice for, for, for over a week now. So I, sound, I sound like I'm really hoarse, but I'm not, I'm not hoarse. It's just, I don't know, I have a weird voice. Just. This is not normally how I sound, but uh, I want to get these videos done because I'm moving house soon and it's going to be so much stress. I uh, will probably have an extremely low activity for at least two, perhaps three or four weeks. So at the moment, the house is being fixed up and of course, I'm going to do a lot myself because I want to. I'm Norwegian. We do a lot of these things ourselves. So... Yeah. Then my voice get a break from hours upon hours of babbling. And yeah, let's make these as well. I'm not too worried about losing a little bit of fishing skill or a little bit of hunting skill because they have good 
you'd have good weapons, good tools, and take away the trident, of course. Yeah, just leave it like that. They are still paused, though. <laughs> but my uh, crafters are still going to make the tools. Yep. We're getting new stuff all the time. Time for a basket group. So each basket takes 16 plant fiber. So we can just as well do one at a time. So baskets it is what I'm going to place down constantly more and more of. And pits, I don't think I will do more than I already have. The rest will be baskets, everything with baskets and, and storehouses. But I will only build storehouses when I have large volumes of any one food, which will most likely be cultivated food. Otherwise, if you are getting insane amounts of wild produce, it will be wasted. And that is not something I would like to do or teach any new players how to do at all. Right. You see, you're almost done. So this means that basically the happiness of people should start to de increase again. A little bit. Yeah, you're going to be dismantled. I'll just do them as they need repairs. With the flashlight, it's quite strong, isn't it? We can easily work at night. Let's have a look, see, and see where is everyone? Why are they so far away? I've never raided any of them. Maybe they've heard of me. Oh, hello. Let's have a look at you, do. No. Oh, God, do you have food processing? An indecisive. Mm. Hesitant. Brother, have to take her. She has more food processing, which we need to get threshers when that time comes. Ah, yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Don't have things people look at the uh, ratio. Yeah, look at. Gosh, never. Will I trade away my stone sickles for rope? Never gonna happen. So a lot of food, a lot of food that we don't need. Oh look, they've got uh, flax grains. Then we know that. But the area we're in should have plenty. Oh, I'll do that. I'll swap some of my bone knives. Definitely, even though the ratio is poor, I am gonna swap some of my 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 bone knives because they are going out on date. I almost said they are decaying to get some fine raw stones. This means, yeah, we will be taking less from our own locality, meaning they will last much, much longer. You know, the, the fine raw stone lasts for decades, decades. They last for millennia. They last forever. They last forever. Not forever, but forever, almost forever. A little forever. <laughs> it's a nice usage of the language there. A little forever. <laughs> Uh, okay, keep going with the building. So, so now for me, it is important to keep up with the 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 agri agriculture skills, the architect. I used to say archaeology all the time, and now I say agriculture all the time. Uh, keeping up with the architecture skills, because if we ever get uh, <laughs> the option to to have. Um, roundhouses grayed out we should have that already in four between four and five kbc we might actually manage to discover it ourselves and that will be great 
you guys are still I'm going to put you on one just to keep up with the with the skills a little bit and you guys too let's keep it on enough for one dryer to be busy one dryer takes 22 units so we can put it on 22 but yeah my guess will come with this this uh, elementary skills you know fishing and hunting is like super elemental that most migrants will have a level or two of, of of these skills so now this one can be X'd out because we will have incoming from the trade so we will just trade every now and then when we are going low or going out of the fine raw stones of those we have traded for and then we don't have to use up what we have in our locality then we can stay even longer. Look at that. Yeah, I'm going to build them. I'm definitely going to build them uh, proper prey options. So the big straw hut, yeah. There's no point building it. I'm going to keep building the uh, reed hut because they have the same sleep quality and only one spot less. So yeah, it's much more economical to just build the, uh, the normal reed hut. So that is what I am going to do. Mm -hmm. Did you get pregnant while you were going trading? What were you doing, Lily? What have you done? <laughs> oh, I can't even laugh. My voice is going, seriously. Let me see. So, oh god, they're going to decay, so I'm going to get less than seven. I'm going to get six, aren't I? Because it's half, half the ratio. So you need um, 14. You need 14 to get uh, seven. But uh, it's going to go down to 13 because they're going to rot away, isn't it? And then I'm going to get only six. But you know, six fine raw stones will last for millennia. Millennia. Look how close it is to decaying away. What if they all decay away because they're so flipping slow? Look how slow they are. Guys, hurry up before the, the tools rot away. Come on. Dude, no. There you go. Yeah. Now we only get six. Yeah, yeah. I knew that was going to happen. Well, six is better than kicking the teeth, isn't it? Definitely, definitely better. And they're still not done trading. Gosh, they were taking a long time, didn't they? They came with shit goods, so no wonder. Nobody wants it. <laughs> Nobody wants the shit goods. But there will be one that would like them. Right, so now there's uh, 40 plus people. So we're going to need uh, roughly between 25 and 30 food. Roughly. Per meal, we have plenty of food. We have so much food. Even though the apple is red, there's no worries at all. And now the happiness is back up to to max again. I just see now the young ones and the old ones put together, divided by two. Yeah, between twenty-five and thirty-ish food, ish per meal so all the meat you see that comes to camp is from the gatherers not the hunters oh well now I have activated the hunters but normally when it's only um, the gatherers who are getting meat you will have a nice trickle from all the animals that has uh, died from old age it could actually sustain a small tribe forever to be honest 
are perhaps growing tribe, not too many perhaps. Maybe not 150, but for sure up to 100, you can easily have a really nice trickle of, of meat coming into camp to make sure that people get loved food constantly every day, more or less. Maybe the odd time, the odd few days with nothing, and then another animal will die. You have so many species to choose between, and there will be, you know, they, they, the circle of life applies for the animals as well. They are born, they become adult, they reproduce, and they die from old age. And then we can strip them and use everything. Everything is used on the animal, nothing is wasted. The skin is used, the food is used, the, even the bones are used. So, so nothing is lost. But you need to make sure that you have enough gatherers to get everything, so nothing is wasted. Yeah, learning and learning. Getting up breed hats. Keeping people happy, important, important. Same time as you keep an eye on your food. More baskets needed. Because we want to cover so that all animal products and all animal produce is in storages as well, locked storages that is. So we'll just keep adding as the fibre comes to camp. Okay, so now all these are gone. Now we have a look at the the wild beetroots are starting to spread themselves now because we're harvesting so little of them. That means they, they are, can spread in peace. Be left alone most of the time because we have so much fruit coming in. So whatever you leave a lot of uh, out in nature has a higher chance of reproducing and reseeding. But if you always harvest everything, then there's a very small chance because there's nothing left to reseed from. So just keep that in mind to, to pause uh, perhaps a year or so on some of the types of food so they have a chance to reseed. So keep also limits on everything so there are plants left to uh, reseed themselves. Let's get the fine raw stones in our storage option as well. There you go, have them all collected in the same area. So the crafters don't have to run around like idiots to find stuff. Bad planning to not do it, to be honest. So let's keep the, the crafters amount small now that limits have been reached on so many things. Because we do want them to maintain the skills we do have without losing any. And the more people you have, the more you can spread it, of course, but you will also run the risk of, of too few people getting up to the max uh, level. Of course, as the tribe grows, you will need to add more anyway. So just, yeah, it is a matter of, of judgment, really, as your tribe grows, what is needed, where do you need to get more skills and where do you need to spread it more and stuff like that but it always always starts with that you need to spread architecture and you need to spread stoneworking until you get uh, uh, by faces and axes because then you will get stoneworking from those as well and then of course when you start building your men here you will get stoneworking from those too but then you have a nice spread and you can also uh, before you get um, um, any axes or uh, bifaces, you should work on your stone working with building fences. Build the stone fences because then you place one person to do it and then he will get up to max level and learn more. 
And when you get axes and bifaces, then the crafters will as well learn the stone working skills. And then you kind of have saved your tribe from from losing stone working because it, it, it I mean it's one lifetime and that's it. If you're playing on fast, you need to be extra adamant with getting uh, tasks generated for the younger generation to learn. You can also lower the work age so that elder people stop working sooner, which means that the next generation can go in and take their spot and learn up to their skills before the elder ones die. So there are many ways to, to make sure that you can keep the skills um, uh, steady in the tribe and also have them increased with steady pace. It, it, you cannot let the game play itself. That's not going to work. At least not in a very small tribe. If you're playing by need and letting the, play, the, the tribe work itself with regards to skills, you can risk losing uh, some levels of skills. Because the tribe is just isn't big enough to justify having a lot of things that will grant a lot of skills. So you will need to generate skills, uh, generate tasks for skill increase and skill maintenance while tribe is small. A lot of players don't remember this and they lose leather working, they lose stone working because they haven't built stone fences because they're not thinking about it and they're playing fast and people don't last that long on fast, you know, because one, one sleep is one month, 12 sleeps is one year and poor people die from old age. It's a bit of, of, a, of a hidden event that people are not always aware of, especially the younger players and also the new players, because they don't think that, that you will have to be a bit intuitive yourself to figure stuff out in the game yourself. And a lot of the things in the game are hidden events that the player is supposed to figure out themselves. And one of the rules or the thumb rules that I tend to say to people, if you transfer real life to the game, you can manage a lot better. Because it's the same in real life. If you don't teach the kids skills, they will not have the skills. And then when the old people who have their skills die, the skills will die with them. Yeah? Does that make sense? Okay. Let's see. So we are getting um, more options to build stuff because people are working on their skills. So I'm soon going to start uh, working on the small men here that I'm going to give my people and also the wooden posts that I love so much to have around them because they're definitely going to get the uh, the wooden posts, no doubt about it. Okay, so now we are having uh, baskets for the dried fish and meat and also for the honey. So now we just need baskets for raw fish and raw meat. Yeah, so almost there. We're going to make uh, more baskets, of course, because we want more three point service storage options for people to go in and help themselves three at a time instead of standing in queue one by one. Yep. So I don't particularly love the new system that uh, informs when a production object has no more materials to work on because it's too similar to the normal error reports that actually needs action. We, can't, we don't want to do anything with, with this. We have paused the fishermen on, on, or put them low on purpose. So there will be dormancy in the production. It goes without saying. Anyway, so now we have three reed huts. So people are, and they're fairly close to the fireplace where people are ending their day, sitting with family, having their meals, blah, 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 blah. And then they go straight into the reed huts. So they will circulate fairly well. 
I should really put it down a bit, shouldn't I? Yeah, there you go, 10. Because you have so much food. Look at the meat is starting to trickle well in again. So uh, that could be a wild boar he slaughtered, the hunter. Because we only have one hunter. We're only hunting boars, rats and hares and wild dogs. The rats are annoying because they can when the storage options, even the locked storage options, when they are coming close to needing repairs and needing repairs, the rats can sometimes get into them and steal the food. But the food amount they steal is so tiny, you won't even notice it. Unless there are gazillion rats, which we don't want. You could have a flipping rat infestation. So make sure you eradicate them with your hunters quickly. Because they breed like, yeah, rats breed like rats. They breed a lot, a lot of kids. They don't give skin though. They don't give any leather and they don't give any bones. They, they basically give, I think it's one meat and that's it. Rat kebab, but anyone? Oh, hell no. <laughs> okay. Let's get a few more graves. Don't need a ton. Just make sure there's always two or three, pending your population size, of course. Don't get caught with too little graves. That can quickly become ugly, even in beginners. Right, so we can add more reed huts. More happy people. Yeah, just get it done. So it's going to be a while now before we discover a lot of more things because we need to be closer to the Neolithic timeline. But you see, we're almost there. We are closing up to 6K now. So this means that we will soon start to get uh, migrants that has at least some Neolithic influence. And in the end, if we are lucky, uh, we either get a migrant that has a full percentage or full, um, full Neolithic influence or uh, two people with at least 50% Neolithic influence gets a baby and then the Neolithic influence will take over and the baby, when it becomes an adult, will have a full percentage, will be full Neolithic or so much that the, the, the game uh, shows it in, in camp and then we get Neolithic stuff. So that can also happen, you know, when they have kids and, and the DNA and, and stuff like that get mixed and poof, they will be... Uh, whiter in the skin and they, they will have different DNA and blah, 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 blah. And of course, then we get more cultural influence from Neolithic and hence we can make new stuff. Okay, so now we can delete these. We just need to get uh, up uh, baskets now for the raw produce, the fish and the meat, the raw ones, because we have for the dried. We're going to make more, of course, for, for each of these things, not only one, because service points are important. We don't want queues. We don't want people to skip meals, especially not kids. Yep, goes without saying. Have a few old people now, don't we? So look at you, you have stone working, but you're feeble and hesitant. Oh, why so much bad? You have nothing and also mate. He does have an increase in stone working, I have to take him. Because now we get by faces, but with shit grades. Fine, have to accept. It is what it is. So now we should go gather some flint cores as well to build it. Do we need 50? I think we need to be a bit more stingy. Let's do half, 25, yeah? Because they are, of course, a lot better than anything else we have. But just to make sure we have plenty enough, let's make 25 of each. Better safe than sorry. Let's get those. We don't need a lot of those. 10 should do it. 
should suffice. We also don't need to add fine raw stones yet because we still have, look at those, we have so many already. They will last for a millennia, so I'm not worried. Not at all. You can go down even, oh, actually, let's go up to 22. That's our full dryer. We're probably going to get a ton of, of meat as well now. Let's spread the, uh, the skills a bit. We've had it pause for quite a while, haven't we? So we need to get up some, some skills. Oh, look at the meat coming in. Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> I knew it the moment I put up the fishman, a ton of meat comes in. Yeah, we're getting there bit by bit, aren't we? Uh, and you, there you go. You can do the raw meat. You can do the raw fish, but I'm going to wait till I have enough. One at a time. Okay, let's go down on these. <laughs> let's go down a bit on the fishermen. So I'm going to get um, a thousand raw stones and then build the men here. I'll probably complete the, the fence as well. Have it further around the small Peltot camp. Probably add some reed houses there as well. Raw meat for you. Let's wait for the fiber to come in before we activate the other one. Just 68, yeah. I'll take you. Activate you two now. So when you have built most of the things that you do need for your tribe, it can be a bit of a wait, can't it? Like it's a bit of watch and wait. I don't mind that. I don't mind that. It gives you um, time to breathe. Okay, so you need to learn, you need to learn. You just learned, yeah, good. And you need to learn, sure, sure. Let new people get the skills. So, so when you have the skills you need to build uh, plus quality housing, uh, I normally chill a bit on the spamming of things for people to, to do. But we can't um, leave it so long that those who have the max skills die from old age before anyone else have learned it. So it's always a good idea to, to have something trickling going on all the time, more or less. 
because as you get better stuff you can delete the old thing you can just dismantle the old stuff let's have a look at you guys no do you have increase in no you have a red area don't you but uh, I'll take you because you're very close to being up to par with the tribe in architect and and I will not deny that and besides there were only two we should be all right we can do another read hunt let's go for it you just need 50 read for a read hut So there are new people learning architecture skills now, which is never a bad idea. You can go up to three, learn it away, learn, learn, learn. Almost done there. A lot of migrants lately, isn't it? Absolutely. Oh, you're good. You got you got three. Dang, and you've got definitely fishing. I'm definitely gonna take you guys. Did you see that one, dude? That had three. Look at them. They're fifty-fifty now. But the next batch might actually give us enough um, Neolithic influence to get farming and livestock. <laughs> we could actually get livestock and agriculture before we get new enough Neolithic influence. So there will be people who knows how to do agriculture, but we don't have enough influence. He has seen how people do it. He has learned the rudimentary skills, but he needs more culture. He needs more insight in order to apply it. So it's this could easily happen and knowing my luck it probably will as well but uh, the neolithic culture will not be far off it's just a matter of randomness really within the specific timeline so you can get uh, the neolithic uh, influence first and then you get the option to to have livestock but you will still need agriculture skills from a different migrant or from the same migrant in order to build farms even though you have the neolithic influence so let's have a look at you no and no no yeah so if you're really lucky the migrant that will have enough neolithic influence to create uh, herder groups and farms also have agriculture skills that is ultimate luck because you could you could get these three separate you know <laughs> They don't have to come at the same time. Because you only need uh, roughly 50% Neolithic influence to learn uh, agriculture skills. And you only need roughly roughly 50% Neolithic influence to um, handle livestock. But you still need more Neolithic influence to actually create the groups. Yeah? To teach to others so it is a bit intricate and perhaps it doesn't quite make sense but it does belong to making things random so so it is it is random but uh, most of the time we actually get the influence the ability to have livestock and also the ability to build farms at the same time and hopefully they also have agricultural skills let's do bows as well they can use both hunting too and fishing and raiding do, do, do. do the bows and more migrants what do you have you have nothing and you have bad grades. You're a no. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. 
I can afford to, to be picky with the migrants. We are doing well with the population we have. So you have learned, you have learned, look how they've learned, look at the amount of green that one has. And you have learned, yeah, that's excellent. So now we have several people who have max uh, architecture skills. So any of these that has maxed out the skills can discover new stuff. So it is a good idea when you have a few that have learned the max skills to create either more work sports and to let others learn to max skills or just basically keep hammering on to get even higher levels because the more people you have that are max uh, level in the skills same as max tribe the higher percentage you have of chance to discover new things yeah spread it around spread the skills that is something you play you players can actively do yourself when tribe is big, the, 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 the system tends to sort itself a lot better than when tribe is small. When tribe is small, they do need a bit of organization help to get it properly spread. This is something that, that still needs to be remembered by especially new players, that this needs to be done. Player needs to be more active in the knowledge spreading and learning in small tribes than they do in the really bigger tribes, 150 plus. Because then you will automatically have much more people in the group because they have much more to do. So you need to fill the work spots with more people and hence more people are learning. And uh, when there's a pause in, le in the, the needs that the group has, then new people are likely to join when they need new stuff, need repairs or building next time. So then another batch of new people will learn up to the max skills. So it kind of uh, sorts itself when the tribe is fairly big. Yeah. But small tribes do need a small hand many, many times. Most of the times, actually. Especially on, on architect and stone working. Those are the two that tend to go yo-yoing if you don't. Add more of the reed huts. Ta-da. So getting up the happiness to max 100 or up to the max you can, which is 100, is never a bad idea. Check your population and see how much food do we need and check your food storages. We have tons of food. We have so much food, it's ridiculous. Fishermen still paused. Look at, look at also the berries because there are 28 people gathering <laughs> berries. So there might be eight berries when they go out together and they come home with, even with just four each, you suddenly up to a hundred. <laughs> you look good. I'll take you. Yeah. 50-50. Ooh. We are so close. Oh, close. Are we get yeah look the uh, the reed is starting to grow more of that is good oh it's so beautiful here man that's such a picture isn't it so pretty look at all the tall grass we've got we've got tons of tall grass oh we can make flint spears sure let's take a ton of those we might have to put it down i'm a bit greedy now aren't i a little bit greedy. Let's have a look. So much food. Because of those have flint cost, that's good. Yeah. You still have flax. Don't need those. Two have flax now, okay. But so much food and we don't need the raw hides. Tons of food, yeah, and the uh, flint core. Okay, so there's uh, an insane amount of food. You know what, we can just, if we need to, we will hammer the uh, tribes with too much food. We raid, we raid them and then they will change the commodity faster. And if we're lucky, they change the things that we want, yeah? Look at that, more migrants. What is he learning though? Oh, great. Food processing, yeah. 
What do you have? Nothing. Oh my goodness, you look horrid. Look at... She had four. She had four bad grades. Look at those. Four red. No bubble. Move on, please. The tribe is still 100%. Oh, it's... The Neolithic is not high enough to even be 1%. Of course, there's so many Mesolithic that the, even though we have several with 50% Neolithic, it's not enough to overshadow the remaining Mesolithic. Just have to wait. Not a problem. I am getting eager now to get the farming then. Um, more migrants? Look at you. No, sorry. I have a look at your. Yeah, still same. It's like 51% Mesolithic and, and 49 Neolithic. We need them to be 51 Neo, please. Please. We might, you know, a smidgen early, just a smidgen. But we are far enough east to to perhaps be lucky with the randomness. We could, we could get a migrant. Or we get two uh, 49 Neolithic parents getting a child. Then that child will be over 50% Neolithic and we will get what we need. Yeah, so there are more ways to roam than one. 69 is, is definitely the average, yeah. 69. Yeah. So from 67 to 71 is normal, so 69 ish average. Ah, annoying. I don't want to take the tree though. So leave the tree. Yep. There's a lot of rain or snow here, isn't it? It's regularly snow and it's regularly rain. But that also means that uh, the farm should be happy with, with the rain, I hope. It doesn't really matter, but for us it matters. For, for, for role play, it does. It really, really does. <clears throat> yup. Okay, yeah. Also, if you keep people happy, you ha they have more births. So if you want to control the population more, make them unhappy, they will have less babies. Okay, so remember that it is the flat side that has the yellow handprints and not the bulging side on the men here. Oh, let's do plenty of these. Ta-da! We're not going to build all the posts yet. We're gonna wait. We are gonna wait. Let's do the wood choppers. Get more wood, more logs, because we're gonna need them for the wood posts. Oh, they're just gonna be quick to do, aren't they? I'm not gonna bother with pausing them all, I think. Just get some logs nearby. There you go. Yeah. So it's basically just watch and chill, really. Watch and wait. Look at that. Our first wooden post. Nice. They look so awesome. You just need 1% Mesolithic in the tribe to have it. So even if you have like almost full 100% Neolithic, and only a few percentage of Mesolithic, you will keep the wooden post until the last Mesolithic member is gone. To avoid it, you can just uh, reject some of the, the Neolithic migrants. Not rejecting them so they don't eat up 100%. It's a bit of a balancing act, to be honest, because you need to remember you can't control the births, and the births are often mixed, uh, mixed culture influence. 
and Neolithic will always have the upper hand if it is 51-51, even though it's 49 miso, there will not be a lot of miso in the child. But you know, if you start in, in 10 KBC, and if you play to uh, 1000 AD, you will still have some Mesolithic influence in the tribe, especially if you um, micromanage a little bit your, your Neolithic migrant intake. So you can control it ish, you know, at least with migrants and uh, how, many you accept, yeah, how many you accept of those migrants. You could still, uh, you know, well into the Neolithic timeline, get Mesolithic migrants coming from areas in Europe that is not as well developed. Look at you, yeah, you're a no. You're a no. And you're a no. Moving on. We do not have to accept migrants anymore. We are doing well without them. So when we reach, um, um, year 10 or so, we should have between 90-ish and 110-ish members. There's no need for more. And the environment will, will, will follow your uh, tribe size bit by bit. Not by 100 every year. That would be problematic because things need time to grow. You know, for instance, a hazelnut tree takes eight years to grow from underground until it is ready to bear fruit so keep that in mind so we are year six then we are 60 plus members so that is fine so year seven i want to be around 70 plus members year eight 80 plus members and this you can control to a fairly okay degree yourself Fairly okay, so the birth rates are calculated to roughly be 10 per year, max, absolute max. But it also is calculated to make up for a lot of, of elder people dying. If you have migrants, you can cock up that balance a little bit, because then you don't have births uh, to calculate. You need to calculate adults going into old people. So this is why you will always have, when you accept a lot of migrants, you will always have a, a doubling of elder in comparison to kids. So if you never accept migrants, you will have kids and elderly fairly balanced uh, between them. So sometimes the kids are a bit higher in, in um, numbers and sometimes the elder are a bit higher in numbers. And then you also know that the amount of people that will die will be the amount of people that will born every year previously so if you give birth to four people the one year then when they are 67 68 69 70 and 71 they those four will die within that year or their years they will live so this is also a bit random but everything is extremely intricate complicated calculations which i cannot explain i just know how it works so everything is really really well thought out and calculated there is there is a system in the madness i promise right so still keeping them yeah you can see there's still meat to be stripped for the gatherers so just keeping the limits really low on food but we are so close now to getting farms that you could just harvest wildly if you wanted to and you still would not go out of meat or any of the other foods. You could um, max out your hunters and your fishermen and you will still have plenty because we have waited so long that the wildlife uh, population will be fairly high. There will be tons of fish and there will be a lot of wild produce to pick between. So um, people who are starting to struggle with uh, when they start in 10 kbc and have to migrate several times if you just remember to always minimize any waste you could manage it you can be smart as well with regards to how you are using your hunters and not hunt all the prey types at the same time leave a few years between each type of of prey so they have a chance to regenerate but you should always get rid of wild boars, rats, 
hares and wild dogs. Don't force um, gatherers to go for one meat. Just let it be. Just just kill them so they don't steal your food from the the area. Wild boars, especially number one on kill list. Wild boar. Luckily, the uh, amount of food that the uh, wild animal eats has been reduced with 75%. I mean, I think I think we protested for so long the amount they ate that the developers gave in in the end. <laughs> they just gave up. <laughs> oh, more migrants. Okay, let's have a look and see what you got. Uh, no. Uh, no. Oh, you have hunting, but you have bad grades. Hmm. You know, how about a sit indecisive, hesitant, and apathic is the worst? No. Hmm. I don't want more bad grades because we have separate quite a few with bad grades now because of their, their skills. There will be plenty with hunting skills. So I'll, I'll just say no, thank you. Move on. Let's see if we can place one over here. We can put it here, can't we? Here. Ish, yeah? Go for it. Um, no, it's too crowded. Let's put it over here. Oh, can I fit in anyone? Inside the other side of the fence as well, maybe. Maybe I can. I'll try. I'll try. Be try later. One step at a time, though. I don't think I can fit in a house there. A hut. Maybe one. Well, I'll have to see. They are fast on the men here, aren't they? They're almost done. Excellent. More migrants. You have nothing. You're fairly young, okay. No. No. <clears throat> and no. He looks good though. Oh, she, she looks good though, doesn't she? She could become a leader. I'll take them. Oh, I'm probably going to regret it. But she looked good. Not far off now. Plenty food. Look at all the meat. Look at all the meat from self dead animals. Because the hunters are paused. And we have so many free people to go gather the meat that we have zero worries and now the men here is done and as you can see the uh, flat end has the yellow handprint let's do some benches benches me here and benches me there we're gonna have some baskets there as well to put food they can sit and eat and admire the men here And of course, have the torch. Must have the torch. It adds atmosphere, doesn't it? Adds environment. So I did not make this torch alone. Let that be very clear. Some people think I made it alone. Are you insane? What I did, I nagged. I found pictures. I conveyed information. I said, yes, I like, no, I don't like, and that's what I did. Seriously, I took screenshots as well, 
but the rest was actually done by extremely competent people yep so yeah and of course i always keep it up to date if need be look how pretty it is the men here i like it Yeah, so I, I said to myself, if I'm going to make a mod, I'm going to have people do it that actually knows 100% what they are doing. And it won't be me because I have zero idea what I'm doing. I know some of the basics, but that's basically it. That's it, really. I'm a complete zero. So, yeah, if it had not been for the devs, my torch would never get done. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So yeah, the, the torch is compatible, 100% compatible with any version of the game. I did fiddle a bit with the files for the torch because I wanted it to last for several days. So now it lasts for several days. And it, it initially it was put to four fine sticks and I put it down to one fine sticks and it was eight of the normal sticks and I put it down to four of the normal sticks so I have meddled a bit with it on my own but that is to increase the time between repairs needed because I don't like it when you need to repair it constantly all the time it's just annoying so I made it so that it takes many days to need repairs well, not repairs, but maintenance, because you need to refill it with sticks, don't you? Because the sticks burn up in the end, don't they? Let's see, let's see if we can get less food wasted if we put it in groups with fewer people in them. Because they're constantly over-harvesting, are they? I'm just going to see how that goes, because we have so much meat now that it's ridiculous. But we should never ever limit any raw meat because if you don't strip the self-dead animals they will just rot away in nature and none will get anything so it is better that we harvest everything ourselves strip everything take it to camp if it gets eaten it gets eaten if it doesn't it doesn't there is zero loss for anyone it is a hundred percent loss if you leave it in nature though a 100 percent loss So we can make the, the big reed hut, but it's um, not needed. We don't need it. People are okay with what we have. And now they can also pray faster and get more appeasement. I'll just put them back again. Don't need to worry too much because we have so much food and also so much food that we can get in nature so if we're going to starve now it must be because i delete all my groups and nobody's harvesting food otherwise we are guaranteed to be fine i kind of knew this because i have done it several times stayed in the same locality to test things uh, i have not done it though after food was reduced even more on hardcore so i could have issues i could really have issues I, however, do not think so because I can min-max even more than I do here in Beginners. There are more ways to min-max. As a beginner, you don't need to know all the ways to min-max because there's no need to min-max. Because it's supposed to be a sort of sandbox uh, level where you can uh, get to know the game without being hammered by all kinds of hostilities which the hardcore um, level is it is the tribe hates you and the nature hates you everyone hates you in hardcore and everything tries to kill you as best as it can <laughs> everything is out to kill you <laughs> so you need you need uh, to know a little bit what you're doing so I'm going to delete a few of these um, straw huts and, and focus more on the, the reed so that a higher percentage of people are sleeping consecutively consecutively in, in the reed huts. Then we can get back up to 100% happy people. So now year 7, we just rounded 70 plus copulation. Hello horsey. 
coming to say hello. Yeah. Well, they are not being hunted, so they are safe. You can tell. Look at that. The horses become 20 years old before they die from old age. That's quite a long time. Have a look at you. You're a no. 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 Look, look, the uh, wild wheat is starting to grow. Definitely now, we are definitely ready for farming. We just need Neolithic influence. Because we have the skills for everything, don't we? We have skills for absolutely everything. We just lack Neolithic influence and we lack one person having agriculture skills. And that's it. Ta-da. We can't build the oven store before we get the lumber mill. We, no, we can. We need log, not planks, my bad. There you go. Let's get down more, more, some more log, log storages. So we can't see the roundhouses yet, it's too early. But uh, let's place down some baskets close to the area where they pray. I see the uh, beetroots are spreading over there by the other stone. So just leave them be to their own devices, they will spread. Of course there's a limit to how much they will spread, but they will spread some and come up every year. Gosh, all the migrants. Yeah, you have uh, food processing and you have nothing. Indecisive. Mm. I do like the food processing though because we're going to need it for threshers. Keep up the food processing skills. Because at the moment we have three. Is it three we have? No, we have two. We have two um, dryers that will give people uh, food processing skills. But we have a nice trickle of meat always coming in so it's constantly being used. Hence constantly building skills. Divide the honey. So now we have uh, two baskets for honey. I'm gonna wait till I've got more plant fiber before I build the other one. Now, when uh, the bifits are almost at limit, we can go down on the materials needed. Less waste. Even though it takes millennia upon millennia, it takes a small forever and almost forever before they decay away. Let me see, you have increased hunting, no bad grades. You have shitty grades. Oh, that's not the worst one. That's not the worst one. Shall, shall not. Let's do it. I denied the other one. I could take this one. We can handle it. We're still, we're still within 70 population. Let's get down another reed. people so increasing 
the amount of um, people in the groups now and also some of the amounts coming to camp. That one should stay low. I'm keeping that one the way it is. You guys can stay the way you are, but get more people. I expect we will get livestock fairly soon as well. Yeah, just leave it as is the rest. So there's a few that lacks proper housing, but it will come soon because we're building um, another reed hut now. Okay, you. Yeah, you need to go back to fishing to have fish, I mean. Um, it's a bit low on meat now, but... We should be alright. People will come in with plenty of food now anyway. Because we are in a good season for all most types of food actually. So I'm not too worried. Even though there's a red apple, don't worry. Ignore it. We are doing this on purpose. Right, so this one needs to go and we are building a reed hut there instead and we can do this basket too and winter you know the winter every year here so we are certainly far enough north to always have winter to always have minus degrees so you're doing yeah you are learning the skills And he's fairly young as well. He's got a way to go though, to, to learn the rest. Unfortunately, they don't learn while they're walking. They only learn when they are actually fishing. So it could take some time to build it up. Oh, you're good in fishing, aren't you? And you're, yeah, okay. What about? Quite close on architecture. But they both have bad grades, but uh, I can't deny anything that has close to what we have in architecture. Yeah, we're getting there, aren't we? Absolutely. I think I'm going to go down on Flint Spears to the amount that will raid. So one raiding party is 21 if you max them out. Look, look, strawberries. Nice. Oh, I can see a roundhouse now. Because we are 5,500 BC. Yeah. Roughly when I thought it was going to come. A little bit early because we are so uh, far east. So east got everything first. Except the passage tomb. The passage tomb originated in French Brittany. But Ireland closed after with Newgrange. And the first passage tomb is older than Stonehenge. Just saying. And also older than the pyramids of Giza. I cannot talk about the extra buildings you see grayed out. But... I can talk about the their normal round house and that will become available if the normal round house become available the other two will become available as well that you can see that is grayed out I will then stop the camera so you can't see what it is because I cannot uh, disclose that information 
It will come in time. Don't you worry. You will in time figure out what it is. You will find out when it's published. Which is not going to be today. Not today. You have three kids. Yeah. So they are hungry now because it is fairly cold, isn't it? So everyone has housing, but I'm building more. Red apple, ignore. We have tons of food. Absolutely drowning in food. So much food. Okie dokie, yeah, we have plenty of food. We don't need to, to put them any higher. There is plenty of food for everyone and there's tons of meat coming in. Very nice trickle, gosh, even more. No. Oh, you have quite a bit in hunting, don't you? And 49.51. <laughs> I'll take them for the hunting. Got quite a bit uh, increase there, you see. That's good. Can't deny that. And now we lack housing. <laughs> it's probably one or two. Oh no, it's because it's being repaired. Duh. I knew that. <laughs> yeah. So, so we 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 can get away with just building by need now because we have so many that has the the maxed out architecture skill. But um, just in case, because people have babies and everything, can I fit one in there? Oh, I think I can. I can get one in. Yep, good. I was wondering if I could actually fit one there. Okay. One is better than none. We have plenty of baskets as well now. We are doing good. So year eight. 80 plus people. Oh look at that. We got palisades and palisade gates discovered by someone who was doing woodworking. Yep, there you go. Ta-da! So I'm just waiting for Okay, more migrants. <laughs> I'm just waiting for more migrants. No. We've got leather working, doesn't it? And it's got uh, woodworking. Or is it the same? It's the same. It's not a bad thing though, is it? And she's got good skill and uh, good grades. And he's not... Uh, or anything but he's got good grades as well I think I'm going to take these people thank goodness we, we, we built more houses <laughs> thank goodness we did can I fit one there no nah nah let's do it over here so nice This complete defense. Oh, it's so difficult to to make nice circles. Looks a bit bob bob to be honest. Straight through the the wheat field. Right. There you go. Keep them occupied. Minus degrees 
and snow, windy, very cosy. Oops, that's not what I wanted. So now we can fit more inside the fence. Yeah. Gosh, what's with all these migrants? Crikey. They can wait. There you go. Oh, one. Oh, he has agriculture. Look, 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 look. But we don't have we don't have the the culture requirements, so we can't build farms even though he's got agriculture. Dude, I told you this could happen. <laughs> I still don't know. <laughs> oh come on. Look, 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 look. We just need a smidgen. One percent. One percent. Now we just need to wait till we either get a market with one percent Neolithic influence or until two with 49 49 Neolithic influence gets a baby because then that baby will have over 51% Neolithic hence then we can build everything we're going to get everything in one go we're going to get herding we're going to get farms we're going to get stone graves we're going to get Neolithic offerings we're going to get tons of things in one go when that child becomes an adult when she turns from 16 he or she from 16 to 17 and that's how it's going to go because we have accepted a ton of migrants now with 49-51 ratio of Neolithic influence, haven't we? So as soon as two of them get a baby together, we will have what we need. Now we just need to make sure that they get a baby together. Let's do some more fishing. Spread the skills. Because this is exciting to see if, uh, if, if a pair couples up with 49-49. I'm sure they will. They don't you normally do though. You don't sit and hang around when you have so many with 4951. It just doesn't happen. They find each other somehow. And get babies. And now it's just a waiting game, isn't it? Because we are in the right timeline to, to get farming now. We've been there for quite a few hundred years actually. more no and no got okay great though. and 4951 <laughs> no move on bubbles can do more baskets on this one around these benches easily You have nothing, you're fairly young, and you have nothing. You're not bad in grades, though. It looks like they're 50-50, but they aren't. I'll, I'll take them anyway. they got good grades. They will do good in the tribe. They won't cause problems, let's put it like that. Go over the groups, make sure we have enough people everywhere to get in enough resources. Yeah. I'm going to prepare for farming. I'm going to make a hundred wooden spears. I, I can sniff farming coming. It's very, very close. I'm psychic. Farming is mm, so close. should probably I'm so worried that we'll run out of materials as <laughs> critical materials I'm a bit worried that I'm greedy we're creating too much stuff see we don't really have a lot of reed or fiber by the river the river is pretty bare you know it's supposed to to come up more and more but um yeah, I think it's a bit still a bit too cold for them because the winters we have are quite harsh, aren't they? You can go down a bit because uh, we only have four of those small straw, straw huts and none of them need repair at the same time. So we can go down, waste less. 
Oh, I need to have more ropes. I'm going to create a single rope group and have them create 20 ropes on average. Um, see, and I'm going to take it away on these or put down because I put it on 40. It's no point. There you go. That'll do it. That'll do it. And a new leader. Yeah. It's not like it's going to change anything. I'm keeping everything on default because we need not meddle with the policies at the moment. I will meddle with them when we get farms. Then I will meddle. No need before. Look at that. Nicely encapsulated. Look at all the look at all the beetroot spreading. So now we're around the time where a lot of people are struggling around 5k BC because they've been there for a long time and have used up all the food resources. The resources. We are just getting more and more because we do not over harvest. We are so stingy that um, my tribe is just, uh, you know, rolling their eyes at me. <laughs> They're acting like teenagers, rolling their eyes. Look at the wild wheat. Yeah, good. More baskets, yeah, more three point service points. Three people help themselves at the same time, less queues, less waste of time, less frustration, less people hungry, angry. Look, look, there's a, <laughs> there's a hazelnut tree growing up in the middle of the camp. It's been growing for quite a few years, but I didn't notice it till now. In a few years, it'll be ready to give fruit. We can uh, basically harvest while we are inside the hut, we just stretch out our hand and take a few nuts. <laughs> no kidding. So there's still red meat there. Okay, so let's uh, get a little bit more. Well, we have a lot of a lot of meat. Let me get a bit to to choose between. Fill the uh, storage options up a bit. I think one of the reasons why um, it is easy still after, you know, even if it's region two and high up in the mountains and a lot of winter and coldness is because we're still far south enough to not have an insane ice age like we do in region one up in the more northern parts. So I think if I do hardcore, I will probably creep up further north to have a proper challenge. No, you have nothing, bad grades. Oh God, do you have leather working? You do. Quite a bit. Several percentage increase. Crikey, I have to take them. Yeah, it is worth it. It is worth it. Cause baby, you're worth it. Oh God, I'm not gonna sing. Don't get me started, dear Lord. Torture and moss incoming. <laughs> Let me see. So, yeah. Uh, fisherman, you can stay, but you must go. Okay, so you are quite high, aren't you? Yeah. God, all the migrants. No. No. So picky now. So spoiled getting so much migrants you know you don't always get this amount of migrants seriously sometimes you can go dry for years and then you get like four in one year and stuff it's so random isn't it it rains a lot here give sun let me see you are going to start preparing yeah that's how sure I am that we're going to get uh, uh, farming soon that you guys are going to start preparing to safeguard the farms let me see I'm going to make so that I can make two fairly big farms you don't need a gazillion farms because you don't have enough people for it and the uh, the yield in um, 
Beginners is so high, it's insanely high. So you don't need more than two, three farms perhaps maxed out to keep the amount of people we have now, roughly 100 people-ish, alive for a long time. Oh, that didn't fit. <laughs> one too many. I'm going to place that one down and delete the last one. Then I'm going to measure and see if I've got it right. And let's start here. We can see where it is. Yeah, let's start here. So it's going to be two lengths for a gate to be connected. And it's a bit too long, isn't it? Yeah, thought so. Right, let's start here then and go till there's two lengths left because that is approximately, yeah, there you go. That is approximately the uh, size of a gate to have yellow on each side, meaning 100% connected. So you guys can do the, okay, I want yellow and yellow. Yeah, excellent. You guys are doing the, the gates. Don't want it to be a communal task. Because I'm going to increase group priority when farming starts to have my farms quickly and painlessly done. So there. Yep. So it's going to take a while before these fences are done. Oh, more strawberries. And uh, crossing fingers that we get farms around the time where the fences are done. That will be great. I'm going to keep that tree. I'm going to knock the others down. Uh, trees can create shadows over some of the of the plants and plants do not like that so i'll probably chuck down some of the closest trees to avoid that i'm going to put a few reed huts here as well with uh, a fireplace and some benches and some baskets it'll be very cozy so if if we get if we get when we get uh, roundhouses, I can replace them with roundhouses, these uh, reed huts. Sounds like a plan to me. Benches. Oh, I think I'm gonna have one over there for sure. Yeah, yeah rid of that stub but not killing the strawberries they will be cropped now anyway or they will die and then reseed further away i think we can have one here can't we yeah there you go ta-da right so we've been here since 10k bc basically zero migrations and in beginners it is actually possible it will be a different matter all together in hardcore but I am actually I think I'm gonna try I'm gonna try to do it in hardcore as well oh we lack so much Neolithic influence to do the roundhouse it's gonna take forever forever before we get them oh, look at that even more migrants crikey let me see uh, no yeah She's got uh, both uh, woodworking and... Oh, God, look at all the fishing she had. Jeez, Louise. And the other one also had the, uh, uh, agriculture. Excellent. So now we have several people with agriculture. Good. But we still need to get agriculture before they die from old age. Otherwise, we won't have the agriculture skills, even though we get the, we get the Neolithic skills. Crikey. Oh, you guys hungry, yeah? Is it too hot? Oh, it is actually quite hot here. Look, it's 23 degrees Celsius. That is really hot. It's burning up the, the, the grass. Damn it. Yeah, we just have to wait and see. Uh, no. No. Oh! Agriculture, of course, I have to take them now. Even more people with agriculture. So we definitely have the skills spread. 
Now we're just waiting. <laughs> yeah, and zero Neolithic influence showing. Animals coming close. That's a, a group of five. No. You're okay, but no skills. No, no. It's fairly high though, but... Uh, we can go to the next. And it's raining again. Yeah. Good happiness. Cannot complain. Oh, we only have like one grave left. Quirk. Squirk. Oh, that's the big one. Let's do the little one underneath the tree. Yeah, because people like to to go and be with their dead loved ones. So let's give them a place to sit and uh, get some peace of mind. There you go. Make it a bit beautiful. Really, more migrants. No, no, no. It looks like it's 50 50, but it isn't, is it? Christ. More and more. Look, we're almost done with the, the fencing. First animal, but we we don't have herders. Oh, thank goodness it's a male. Then we're not going to lose any milk. Uh, oh, look, it's got increased the hunting and increased leather working and increased food processing. Yeah, I would take them for the goat alone, to be honest. This also means, look, we can't make herding group. We need 1% Neolithic influence. Come on. <laughs> so let's um, create an area for the. Uh, for the goat to eat, to get uh, straw. Yeah, no, not wheat. There you go. So let's go down a bit on the haystacks. So did I only have one? Oh yeah. I thought I had several. We had no idea. I dismantled the others, didn't I? Okay, so now we can eat inside the uh, fenced in area. God, how many people have I lost? There you go. Uh, don't kill the tree. Yeah, nice. Is that a double tree? Look, they grew up right next to each other. So now they intertwine it to each other. Oh, forever together. How romantic. Yeah, I'm not romantic. Much. <laughs> Let me see. I have a few elders, but not like a million gazillion elders. Can get a bit more of those. Because we have quite a few people that are doing nothing and I don't like that. I don't like people idling. Get a little bit more now that we have a livestock. Okay, yeah, it looks good. The rest looks good. We have a nice income of everything. There's nothing we lack. People are happy and gay. So, no issues.
created a storage area for more of the reed so it doesn't uh, mix in with the straw inside the animal enclosure. Don't want that. Let's see if any of them have changed commodity to something useful. Still a lot of food. Oh, a lot of food. Yeah, still one there with flax. Food rope, food rope, 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 rope. That was a lot with rope, like four or five in a row, seriously. And the rest is just basically food. And one with fur as well, or raw hide. Yeah. You know, if it gets to it, we might just have to, to pound a few of them to force them to change commodity quicker. There's too many there with, uh, with food, which we don't need because we are basically swimming in tons of food. No need whatsoever. Okie dokie, and we are still waiting. Look at all the food, oh my god. So much crikey. We just, we just have to put down the limits again. It's just too much. Ta-da! We can stay here forever. Seriously, we can stay here until the, the another patch comes out and, and we can't reload the save. <laughs> we can stay here for half a year. I don't know how long we can stay. We can stay forever. Seriously. We're never going to run out of food. And if we can if we can torture our tribes or the neighbor tribes to, to have the commodity we need by pounding them or you know constantly raid and trade we're all good we don't have to use any of our critical resources in the locality at all look at all the, all the baskets with food that with meat are full let's get more dried meat baskets oh. Yeah, because we don't want it lay laying on the ground, even though it's secure and, and no wild boars can come take it. So, oops, could even make some, oh, I don't fit that, no, too small. Okay, you can put it here, yeah? Oops, I didn't mean to do that. There you go. Even more dryers for, for meat. You know they love raw meat as well as the the, the dried meat, but it's it's uh, it's useful to have the dryers when it's too much of the raw meat to l not decay away. Have a look at you. You got good uh, food processing, and you have agriculture. Gotta take them. And forty nine fifty one, or maybe they are fifty fifty. Oh, we need 51.49. Duh, duh, duh. Could be. At least we are ready for farms now. They are secured. You got quite a few babies. But you are hungry, yeah. It's still winter. Yeah, let's get the meat dried. Beef jerky. I hate beef jerky. It's disgusting. Disgusting. But I do love fish jerky. <laughs> I know I'm weird. I'm Norwegian. Of course I like fish jerky. I grew up on it. Come on. Come on. Right. Come on now. Let's get some Neolithic influence. Why can't I place them on top there? That would be so cool, but I cannot. So Okay, so a bit in front then. Makes it quite cosy with, with the torches, doesn't it? Quite dramatic, actually. That would be the drama. Okay. 
could probably place down a few more of these. That looks weird. Like, the symmetry doesn't work out. Odd. I'll just place down one then. That'll work at least. Doesn't look too weird. There you go. I'm going to place down a little bit. Oops, that's not the one I wanted. I always do that. I always press the wrong one. Uh, I'll just put some of the uh, reed here so they don't have to go to enti entirely into the camp to, to fix the, the reed huts. Oh, sorry, I did not mean to put it into your group. Let's take it back to tribe. And you guys can have a bit over here as well. Bit to read here too. So this one can go away then because we already have one storage area over there and more. Oh, and another, another goat. Oh, God, look, she has nearly the housing. She's now made us into Neolithic housing. So now it's not far off. Seriously, now it's just around the corner. Oh, it's a female. But she's still a baby. So she will... Oh! Someone just became an adult. Atain became an adult, it said. Look at all the things we got. I told you, I told you, look! Let me see who is it. There she is. She just turned from 16 to 17. That's another one. In two years, she will give more as well. In Neolithic influence. So she just uh, turned 17. And hence, her culture would be counting. So now we have herders. And we have fought. We basically have everything. Basically everything. But it's going to be a little while before she's uh, old enough to be milked. But at least we have herders. Did I already say we have herders? <laughs> okay, so we have threshers too. I'm going to wait with uh, um, getting any wheat or flax though because we don't have ovens or mills. So it's absolutely no point. Except to give it to the animals. But giving wheat grain to the animals feels extremely wrong. Okay, so you guys are going to get go going with getting both beets and peas. Because that's what we are going to need. We're going to start with, with peas and beets and that's it. That's all we're going to start with. Yeah, I still need quite a bit of a Neolithic influence to be able to bake. That's fine. The ball has started rolling. So the farming is quite changed. You need to um, use the priorities in the farm to decide how many people should. So let's see how far I didn't go. Okay, we can go up a bit. So you need to use the priority in the farm to decide how many people should be allowed to work on the farm at the same time. And then you just change your group work, work spots to fit. So at max, you can have 56 on a 900 farm. But um, on, on normal, you won't need 56. So we can go down to, uh, to default and then adjust the groups thereafter they will be done in time because there's plenty of time for them to to get done it's only one it's only one field of, of food they need to do but the beet farm will be a little bit smaller oh oops <laughs> that was weird so we're going to use freehand on this one
Very pretty, very beautiful. There you go. Connect them. Ta da! And then we're going to put beets. So now that we've gotten two farms down and we have tons of resources to harvest to plant, I can say with 100% guarantee that uh, we are survivors. There is no way we are going to fail. We have done it. So, on beginners, it's really, really doable if you don't waste a gazillion things. Don't waste your food. Don't start with without limits, in, in, even in 10k BC. You will have plenty of food, both fish and, and the... Uh, <clears throat> I'm just going to see where it goes. Can people walk there? Yeah, they can walk everywhere. Okay, good. So, yeah. And don't hunt up everything. Just keep the hunters paused as often as you can. Or you can hunt wild boars, of course. Rats and hares and the wild dogs. But leave the big animals. They will give a nice constant trickle as the years go by. That your, li that your tribe can easily, easily live off. No problem at all. Right, so let's get these harvested and locked down so whatever else is going to contain any of the cultivated food should have their storages priorities uh, to default so that the ones with the highest priority is always filled first that is a bit important to remember even on hardcore people will eat up your seeds so that you don't have don't have anything to plant with when planting season comes that is a, a lesson that I'm still learning. I still make those mistakes that I forget to lock down the locked storages, the storages after people have eaten up the seeds and then the harvest comes and the uh, beets are harvested and then suddenly I realized I forgot to lock it down and people have already eaten up the beets. That is so annoying. But I keep doing it. So it can't be painful enough for me to remember it. Okay, so we've got a new leader as well. Thank you for your years. Uh, yeah. So there's plenty of the, the wild crop to, to get from everywhere. I mean, just look at all the, the beetroots everywhere. It's tons of it. So let's harvest some of it. Ta-da! and chung up with it so everyone is spending their time on cropping getting look at look at all them going this is how you can use your policies correctly to get done what you want to get done and to get it done quickly if you know how to work the policies you, you are already a winner there's more let's do more probably don't need it but this is so fun Look at all the amounts of tasks I've created. It's insane. This is something I don't recommend for anyone to do. Seriously, don't 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 do like Lily. Do as I say, not as I do. Okay. <laughs> oh, crikey. Yeah. So we will get tons of of food and straw and whatever else they're cropping. The, the weed gives nothing, it just disappears. I should really put down some tool areas as well, where they um, can swap tools between cropping the, the uh, or clearing the field and from when they start to uh, tilling it because you you need you need wooden spears to till if the, the farm is not tilled you can't plant and they can't till by hand they can plant by hand but they cannot till by hand so uh, also getting a, a solo task craft a group for the wooden spears only to make sure you never run out of wooden spear spears always have more wooden spears than you have people just to be on the safe side because there's nothing more frustrating than having plenty people but only a few wooden spears left so yeah better safe than sorry okay yeah because there was ton tons in now don't need that anymore 
I'm going to put up the, the work hours and the work age again when um, the season starts. What do you have? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you learned more food processing. Sure. So I always have the mail that I'm using as a stud out in a tribe view because I don't want him to be slaughtered when he turns old because males um, can father offspring until the day they die. And um, the second they turn old in groups, they will get slaughtered or they can live up to five years longer when they're not in a group. So this is a small hint and tips on how to keep up with the livestock. You basically have one stud of each species out in tribe view and try to find one that has a low biology, like a small stature or has a, um, a wit uh, fitness reduction grades and uh, keep him there and let him die from old age. And uh, you need to know how long it takes for each animal to reach maturity so you can replace them in time. For instance, uh, a bull will live for 15 years. So uh, a calf will need four years to become mature. So when the bull is between 10 and 11 years old, you need to take out a bull from the herder group and take it into tribe view only, tribe responsibility, to avoid it being killed. All other males should be killed. I know it sounds horrendous, but this is the best way to do it. If you want to min-max and have only females and only one stud male. And the reason why you pick the male that has low biology, low fitness, is because they eat less. Yep. Small tip. So if you're looking to min-max, for instance, in hardcore, this is the way to do it. I also uh, slaughter all pigs as soon as they come to camp. Because even though they can have up to three babies in one go, they still eat a lot more than they give meat. However, if you can afford, if you can manage to feed them only straw, without compromising your housing, housing materials to build and repair, then pigs are okay because then they are a plus because then they take straw which is non edible and give back meat which is edible but if you have to complement the food with your humans food then pigs are no longer economical so then I just slaughter them so there okay so let's do some thresher group because uh, we need to thresh because uh, when we cleared over there we got both uh, wheat crop and also flax crop so we're going to make them into grain and uh, it probably will be the animals eating them up anyway but at least they are edible for some of the tribe the livestock all two of them i just hope she gets pregnant quickly so we can start building a a, a nice uh, flock of goats Let's see how should i do this because, uh, yeah, I think I'll just make two two enclosures and not uh, put them together. Actually, I don't think I... No, I don't think I want to do that. And this one is a bit far off. I think I'll have it closer to... Closer to the... Um, the side that the tribe will like to come in on for ease. Yeah, I think I think I'll start here and go up a bit. Let's just see how it how it goes. If I go from here to there, does it go over? No. Let's do there. So it should be yellow on each side now, if I've calculated correctly. Yellow and yellow. Yeah, perfect. There you go. Ta-da. That's good. Excellent. Yep. Right. Let's... Uh, with them build in peace just watch a bit so we got both farms down and um, yeah we should really make a storage area for both wheat and flax though 
to be honest. Just tidy away whatever is floating around in camp after we did some ravaging of the area. We can move those later when we build more farms, no problem. Look at them going, so quick. And more migrants. You don't have anything, you don't have anything. You have nothing. Mm. You have bad grades and you have nothing. Mm. Move on, please. Okay. Oh, that can be neutral as well. Default. There you go. There you go, now we have a thresher for each as well. So they can be made into grain and to be fed to the livestock if they want it. They probably do. They probably do. Lacking tons of Neolithic influence to get the roundhouses. It's gonna take ages to get them. Like, ages. Look at her, having a baby and a female baby. That was great. Okay, so now they are done with, with planting already. That was fast, so we have more people than we actually need. Let's see if they can peel up the stones in time to have uh, it uh, um, tilled and planted, because they have only until the last week of May And then uh, time is up. Time is up! Fight! Well, not quite, but hey. That's a lot of food for them. It will be a bit wasted, I think, but just can increase that one a bit. Yeah. Oh, look. They managed to peel up all the stones. So now we just need people to come and do the tilling and the planting. This is the last day coming up now. This is the last day they have. So I'm going to max out the work hours to make sure that they are working until it's done. Somehow they tend to be a bit lazy when there's little to do. And when there's a ton to do, then they're all hands on the, on the pump. <laughs> right. See, they've already started growing. But I believe in you guys. You can do it. Go, go, go. It's annoying that they only do a few tasks each when there's only a few tasks left. Then they leave and the rest of the group is coming to do more. Oh, she's staying though. That one planting. She's really going. Okay, and then she stopped. There's one left. Come on. This is the last day they have to do it. Do it. Yay! <laughs> win win. Look how far the beats have come already. On the way. So the basket is full already, and I remember to lock it. Go me. So we don't need to have it on high anymore because you won't need several days to do uh, harvesting. You just need one or two days and then you're good, really. Also place down a big reed hut to give people proper appeasement because I'm playing around quite a lot with the work hours now, aren't I? Pushing the tribe a bit. Let's do a bit extra on the reed. 12, 14, 14. Yeah, there you go. Uh, 
maybe I shouldn't place down two because they will fight about the places inside the house. Let's just do one per per house so they don't argue too much about the spots. Let's see how they're doing. Yeah, ready to be harvested here as well. Look at all the plants. There's so much food. Oh my god, there is so much food. We just will never eat up all this food. Never in a million years. Look, when everyone is uh, active, they are so many. <laughs> it's quite mesmerizing to watch, actually. So this is basically not really a challenge, to be honest. If you just don't go wild on, on the food, you are okay. If you remember to put limits on everything and, and not over harvesting the food, you are okay. I even think with harvesting too much, not like the entire thing though, but oops, I don't want to do the tree. With over harvesting a little bit, you can still get away with it and not having to migrate. It is just be careful with the limits. Don't have it high. There's no need. And calculate correctly how much food your tribe needs based on your population. That's kind of all there is to it, isn't it? But there's not a lot of, of, of micromanagement things with regards to the uh, policies either. You can leave the policies on default most of the time and just uh, up them in special events like farming. I always up my workouts for farming just to get it done because it will take you basically your entire tribe when your tribe is big will take your entire tribe to, to get them done. Because of course I push everything that is of limits. More migrants. Oh, they are Neolithic! Full Neolithic! I'm not even going to check them, I'm just going to take them. Just saying. That is it for this time. We have stayed since 10 KBC. No migration and to be honest, no issues What? So ever, not even close. A bit higgledy piggledy with what came first of skills and culture, but hey, we made it anyway. So remember a few points. Control unrest by building enough good housing for all. They will rotate. Limit your food. Pause hunters and fishermen if you produce too much, or at least fishermen and then hunters kill the wild boars, the hares, the rats and the wild dogs if you like. Count the food needed per meal based on population, old and young divided by two, and one unit per adult. Be careful with scarce resources, especially raw fine stone. Raid and trade for what you can to avoid depleting your own locality. And be picky with the migrants. Only pick what can benefit the tribe. Try to keep it roughly 10 increase per one year max. I shall see you next time and until then, have fun and take care.